Live from Weatherby Complex in Hamden, it's high school football on TV5. Tonight, the MCI Huskies are on the road to take on the Broncos of Hamden Academy. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Small, along with Brian Sullivan. Glad to be back with you on Friday night under the lights. And, uh, Sully, we got two teams coming in here, both one and two, both looking to get something started. Let's start with the visitors, one and two on the season. And uh, some low numbers this year, but they've improved that a little bit. Yeah, from week one to week four, I think you're going to see a vast improvement, a team that wants to throw the ball. They've now got co-head coaches, Tom and Alex Bertrand, now uh, running the offense and the defense. Going to see a little spread offense. Hopefully you put some points on the board as they try and take on that Class C opponent. Yeah, certainly a little bit of a difference. you got to the experience on that sideline where they're coaching. A brand new coach for Hamden Academy. They're also 1-2, and two, dealing with a lot of injuries tonight. Yeah, we're going to see the backup quarterback among a, among a couple of other kids. They're going to be playing out of position or up a spot. So we'll see if they can overcome those obstacles. However, this is a team that everybody we talked to says has a lot of talent and they're starting to find themselves uh, as this is their homecoming too. A little extra a little extra something there, John. Coach likes the team he's got and says they got a lot of speed, they got a lot of talent, and they got a lot of will. So we'll see what happens here tonight. MCI taking on Hamden Academy. We'll have the kickoff for you when we come back. We had a lot of work to do and we came in with a plan and Troy took great care of us. He took us through all the options that were good for us and we told him our needs and he really, really came through with us. Yeah, brought us, well, we brought home some examples and come up with a decision and they made it happen. Yeah, Mainwood Floors is a local business and we really like to see local businesses boom. Today's high school football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. Support your local high school athletics and make a difference. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. This Hamden Academy Broncos football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Kimberly's at the Marina, a hidden gem located on the Penobscot River in Hamden. Dirigo Nutrition. Get your teas, shakes, and more only at Dirigo Nutrition. Located in the heart of Hamden at 60 Main Road North. Healthy starts here. And Angelo's Pizzeria in Hamden. Pizza, subs, salads, and more made with the freshest and finest ingredients. Stop by or order online today. All are excited to cheer on the Hamden Academy Broncos. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. Welcome. Welcome back to the Weatherby Complex where we are set for high school football on a chilly fall feeling Friday night. Brady Rogers getting set to kick it off for the visiting Huskies of MCI. Wearing the road whites with the maroon pants tonight. The Broncos in their purple uniforms tonight with the white helmets. Glad you could join us and... Uh, Really, Sully, the first night it's actually been a little chilled in the air Yeah, this I haven't, season. I haven't worn the old uh, jacket no, uh, for this time. broadcast. This is our first time out, but uh, it is the last day of summer. feels very fall-like, doesn't it? And here we go. We are underway. And the kick is taken by Kotchendoffer, I believe, back there. It is. And he makes a nice return. You're fooling everybody, our camera people, uh, everyone, as he was zigzagging across the field. And he makes it out to the 44-yard line. Nice return. Yeah, he just took what exactly uh, was, a, was given to him there. A little seam off the gut. Cuts it to the left. And nice starting field position for the Broncos as uh, the man who returned the kick also going to be 
the quarterback on this uh, Friday evening for the Broncos. That's right. Unfortunately, the starting QB, uh, Nick Johnston, the junior, suffered a concussion last week, so he was he is out. We saw him out there with the captains at uh, midfield, but uh, Kotchendoffer has been taking all the snaps in practice as the first run is going to go to Tyler Coffin. we got a flag on the play. Yeah, surge like that on the MCI uh, defensive line. I'm thinking that's going to be a hold on the Broncos, and it, indeed it is. See if MCI accepts this one. Yeah, they dropped uh, Coffin for a two-yard loss. But you got to think they'll they'll take the holding penalty, right? Let's make it uh, first and twenty. We will see what uh, Coach St. Hard has up his sleeve tonight. First-year coach for the Hamden Academy Broncos, and in talking with us this week, you got a backup quarterback. He likes to have a more balanced offense, but probably you're going to see a little bit more heavy run tonight rather than pass so we'll see what happens yeah I, I w am interested to see uh, what we see on both sides of the football tonight a couple of teams that the coaching staff said a lot of talent is starting to come into its own you know you get four weeks into the season you start to learn a lot about yourself and and we'll see what they're able to accomplish this evening so Kotchendoffer is going to take it to the left side, going to protect that football. Was hanging it out there a little bit, and he almost did lose it. But he gets himself back up to the 35. That's a long way to go for about a gain of one. And that's going to bring up second down and 19. Yeah, couldn't quite decide what he wanted to do. Thought maybe I'll dump it out into the flat. Or maybe I might have had somebody if he would have uh, held up and thrown it. But ended up keeping it himself and picks up a couple. So second and long here for the Broncos, first offensive drive of the game. Cross-class battle here as you've got the Class D MCI Huskies taking on the Class C Hamden Academy Broncos. Now you see Kaysen Wildman in the backfield, and looks like uh, Coach St. Hard saw something he didn't like there, and he called timeout. So we'll come back after this. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings, and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. Get looped, get sold with Next Home Experience. Second down and 19, and Conchendorf is going to throw it. He's got a nice little pass out there to Coffin, who's got the first down and more. Takes it down to the MCI 42-yard line. What a game. Yeah, great offensive play call there by the Broncos. Coming out of the timeout, get exactly what they want. MCI with a great surge up front. Okay, you're getting a little blitz on us. We'll take advantage. Set up a screen, and uh, when you got a quarterback out there trying to find himself, finding some easy completions. That's exactly what they do. Coffin out there. Little run after catch. Coaches love that stat. So they put it at the 43, 22 yard pickup on that play. And they go right back to Coffin on the ground. Boy, he is speedy and off he goes to the races. Will he be caught? And he is going to be pulled down from behind finally. But what a run. Matt Bernier, the linebacker, had to chase him down and knock him down. But what a run by Tyler Coffin. Absolutely. Just a little burst up there. Reverse field. Take it to the outside. Thought maybe he would withstand this first a would-be tackler. He does break one. And that's why just a pack of Huskies taking him down. 29-yard run down to the 14-yard line. Well, that's one thing uh, Coach St. Hard was talking about. His team's fast. They've got some speed. They've got some athletes. And uh, they're showing it right now on this drive. First and 10 for the Broncos from the MCI 14. Here's the pitch. Out to Coffin, and that time, boy, I think we're going to talk about Matt Bernier a lot tonight, Sully. He just uh, hauled down Coffin for a loss. Yeah, he's one of the best that uh, does it on both sides of the ball. You're going to see ball, all these Huskies play pretty much both ways. Uh, uh, 
all evening long. There'll be a couple of kids getting a spell every here and there, but uh, Bernier is uh, one of the best that the Huskies are going to trot out there. Yeah, we got a penalty, so they're going to backhand it up again. Another, another holding penalty on the Broncos. That offense has uh, looked pretty darn good to start, but yeah. shot themselves in the foot, or the, the hoof, if you will, a couple of times out of the gate. So they'll bring that back to about the 23-yard lines. That's going to bring up second down and 19. Need to get to the four. MCI is a team that's going to come out. You're going to give, get a 4-3 look from them uh, the majority of the game here. Well, why not go back to Coffin? Look at his speed. Oh, big hole off the middle. He goes. Touchdown, Broncos. Well, that's one way to get yourself out of a hole after a penalty. It was all Tyler Coffin all, all night long wow. on that drive. And uh, a great surge by those guys up front. You mentioned off the top here, Hampton dealing with a couple of injuries uh, on that offensive line, but didn't uh, notice it one bit. On that first drive is a couple of big holes for Mr. Coffin to mosey on through. One more look at it there. and Untouched all the way through in the end zone. That's what the homecoming crowd loves to see out of the gate. So Tyler Coffin with a 22-yard touchdown run. And boy, Hamden has been bit by the penalty bug tonight, but uh, they are on top. As Andy Hennigan is out there, was going to attempt the extra point. See the home crowd tonight. On homecoming, full stands. So they move the ball back to the seven, and now instead of kicking it, they're going to go for the two-point conversion. Yeah, hard. I couldn't quite decipher what the procedure penalty was there. Maybe too many men in the huddle. I couldn't tell. But either way, back from a five, and instead of trying to go for the one, try and grab two. Kachendoffer rolling out right, and he's going to try to throw it. But uh, boy, he just got a bunch of huskies around him. So the two-point try, no good. Six nothing, Hamden. Early here. In the first quarter, 8.39 to go. Yeah, going into this one, John, I wasn't sure what we're going to see, and I, I'm still not sure until we get a chance to see what MCI can do offensively. But uh, you mentioned what Hamden is going to be able to accomplish offensively without their quarterback out there. But Caution Doffer seemed very uh, capable as he led that offensive drive. And now MCI gets their uh, crack at it. And they're a team that's going to come out here and try to run a spread offense. They want to pitch it around. They've got, uh, you know, you're talking maybe 15, 20 throws uh, in the evening. Evening, and, uh, you know, they'll try and mix it up offensively, but we mentioned this too. They had 22 kids to start the year. Uh, they've since had seven get on board, so 29 now. But you think about the difference between having 22 kids at a practice for a football. I mean, that's everybody right there. So one kid gets a little tired, uh, you know, turns an ankle. You're, then you're, you're having coaches play linebackers and things like that. So just by having the numbers, MCI has... Uh, extremely had, uh, you know, improved their opportunity to get better during the the weeks leading up to the games. And that's what Coach Bertrand was saying. Just from week one to week four, it's totally different. So Hennigan kicks it off. Oh, and baby. Caleb Kennedy had a little trouble on the, uh, on the catch, but he does fall on it. That's what matters. And uh, MCI will go on offense at their 24-yard line. All's well that ends well. That's right. was playing with a little fire there. Ooh. That was... Uh, Dicey, dicey for the uh, Husky fans. Well, one thing, uh, you mentioned it, the Hamden Academy coaching staff is certainly wary of it. They know that uh, the Huskies, they like to throw it, and that's uh, one of the things that they wanted to accomplish tonight was to contain their quarterback, and uh, the MCI Huskies have a good one in the junior, Caleb Kennedy. What they did is they took their best athlete, and they figured let's just give them the ball as much as we can. And here he goes, but really nowhere to go as he's met right at the line by Hennigan. Great play by the Hamden defense right there. Called the right blitz at the right time on that one as a little QB keeper. And uh, he threw the line with Hennigan. Right spot, right time. Stopped that thing dead in its tracks. Yeah, lost two or three yards on that carry, too. Back to the 20-yard line. 
So if it's not going to be Caleb Kennedy, it's probably going to be number nine, Drew Shorey. They're two junior captains that uh, the coaches want having the ball in their hands as much as they can. And here's Kennedy again trying to find some space on that left side, and he, he just can't do it. A whole bunch of purple jerseys over there led by the linebacker, Kaysen Wildman, and really no room for Kennedy to operate over there. And I think uh, for the majority of uh, Coach Bertrand's time here, oppos opposing teams have tried to decipher the yellow cards on the far side of the field to try and figure out that intricate offensive All I want to know is, I, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, Sally. The Detroit Lions helmet's still on it. There is, I think the, it used to be. <laughs> I, it is uh, impossible to that's figure what I, out. That's what I want to know. That's all I want to know. Opposing teams have tried for decades. <laughs> none have been able. So he picked up a couple, so it's going to be third and 11 here. Now he's going to move right side. Thought about throwing it. Now he dumps it out in the flat. Tended for Bernier. And uh, just a little bit too far in front of him, so MCI looks like it'll be three and out for them. Yeah, just a, a little jitters. First time out here, can't uh, get a good handle on the ball. Uh, much in the way that Hamden got their uh, kid, Kachendoffer, a nice little easy completion. MCI trying to do the same thing there, uh, unable to uh, make it go on third down. And out comes the special teams unit, probably going to punt it back to the Broncos. So Shorey is the punter for the Huskies. He will get ready to kick it away. And really, he was booming him in practice. Great hang time. And look, look at that thing. Hang up there. Now if it just gets a MCI bounce, nope, it's going to take a Hamden bounce and a roll back to the 40, unfortunately, for the Huskies. Well, the fan cam is sponsored by Maine Wood Floors. Buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and Dickel Floors, Dickel Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. And uh, that is Tinley, and I believe baby Tinley, I'm told, is a year old today. Did I hear that right? That's what the word was. I think she was listening to our broadcast here, and uh, we put her right to sleep <laughs> right out of the gate. Not too interested. <laughs> you know, uh, the the... Headband is key. Oh, the, the chill in the evening. Yes. But you know that's that's right there. That, that's that's Bronco pride coming out uh, on a Friday night to support the team. Mom's the cheering coach. That's a lot of school spirit. Well, here we go. Uh, by the way, Hamden Academy has another really good running back. His name is Gabe Thornwall. He got the ball that time, but uh, again, Matt Bernier right there in on the play as they knock him all the way back uh, to the 43-yard line. Loss of three. Second down and 13 for Hamden Academy. Great field position for the Broncos. And here's Coffin again. Boy, even when there isn't a big hole, he finds it, and he gets it back close to the original line of scrimmage. First moment of consequence here for uh, MCI. You got a third and ten coming up. Can you uh, get the ball back and get your offense back out to try and get something clicking? And uh, if you're Hamden... You don't need to get it all here at once, right? You know, get yourself in a fourth and manageable. Make yourself in a spot where you can two, two downs to get this. You're probably in four down territory. You would think. So third and ten from the MCI 40. We've got 545 remaining here in the first quarter. On a chilly night in Hamden at the Weatherby Complex. Thank you again to all the folks at Hamden Academy. Always very welcoming to us when we come here, just about every year. Kachendoffer now gets out of some trouble. Coming to that left side. Oh, he's got some room. Puts out the stiff arm, and he gets about five or six yards. So he picked up a good chunk of that 10. Yeah, kid's got some wiggle, doesn't he? Gets out of the pocket pretty well. And... Uh, it's a little nerve-wracking, though, seeing him carry that football out there. You gotta, he does hang it out there, he doesn't does he? He does a little bit. <laughs> he switched it, though, when he, he had did. to. Yeah, as he saw a Husky approaching, he did tuck it away. <laughs> <laughs> so fourth and five, and you would think Camden Academy would go for it here on the MCI 35-yard line. It appears they are. So fourth down and five. I would watch old number 42 in the backfield there, but we'll see. Nope, going to throw it. In trouble. And now he just has to throw it downfield. And, uh, boy, that is good defense by the MCI Huskies as three Huskies were pursuing Kachendoffer. But hang on just a second. got a flag. Oh, boy. Downfield. Oh, my goodness. Illegal man downfield on him. So, You're going to decline it. MCI ball. 
So MCI will get the ball on the turnover on downs, and boy, it has been a been a rough night penalty wise for the Broncos. Yeah, a couple of uh, I mean that that comes with kids playing out of position. You know, you have a couple of injuries, and then some starters become starters at other positions. Kids off the bench end up playing in spots they're not used to. So you just get you got to work it out a little bit, you know, and that's shown in the first uh, series or two here. So here is Kennedy, gives it to the fullback, Bernier, and just nowhere to go as everybody in a purple jersey was there, led by Evander Preston, big defensive tackle. Yeah, Matt Bernier is a kid who, the, uh, the one, he's a fullback, and the coaching staff wants to get him involved. He's a big part of the defense, but in the middle of that uh, backfield, they want to see him get a couple more carries, get that feel on the offensive side. And you called his name a couple times on defense, so we might see it a few more times just to keep that defense honest. You know, it's, we've seen it all the time here. Give that dive, give that dive look and see if you can't expand off it. Lost about a half yard, so we'll call it second and ten. High snap for Kennedy. He pulls it down, and boy, he makes some nice moves over there on the right side. Takes it up to the 44-yard line. He could have been brought down a couple of times, but a nice run by the QB. Yeah, a little high snap. You good hands by the QB to handle that thing, and you can tell the coaches have said, hey, he's our best athlete. We want our ball in his hands, and he's, he's shown that uh, in spades so far. So nine yards makes it a third and one. Much more manageable for the Huskies. Ball on their own 44-yard line. 4:05 to go here in the first quarter. Seems like some uh, indecision. A couple of guys shuffling on and off, trying to figure out exactly what this is. Oh, there's the Lions helmet. Oh, that's good news. Still there. Still there. <laughs> still there. <laughs> I don't know what it means. But Rest still there tonight. Yes. Third and one. Kennedy going to push the pile. And uh, more than enough for that first down. That's one of those, you know, you see the NFL now where they all push the guy, the, the ball carrier is pushing the pile there. And he hung back waiting to see, you know, where the hole was going to open up and then ended up being just everywhere. So he just took one step and plowed forward and watches. He kind of holds up for just one second. Wow. Four yards. Great there too. surge by the uh, Huskies up front to make that one go. And a first down for MCI. Huskies happy with uh, their offensive line. They got a couple of leaders there, Gavin Hanscom and Gabe Willett, senior captains. They've been around for a while. So as much as we've heard they want to throw the ball around, they've uh, had pretty good success on the ground so far. First and 10 for MCI from the 47-yard line. Now he's going to throw it just a little bit out of the reach of Connor Reynolds. Yeah, Connor Reynolds is a kid who they want to get the ball in his hands as much as they can because he's one of the fastest kids on the team. So just a, a screen pass out in the flat that did not uh, end up working out. But uh, we'll probably hear his name a couple of times here tonight as well. So that'll bring up a second and ten now for MCI. Looking over at the sidelines. MCI with that kind of unique co. I, I, I went up to talk to them before the game. So I, how you doing, co-coach? How you doing, co-coach? As uh, they've embraced the France, yes, they have. And so, uh, so Tom, who's been there for years and years, gives way to his son. Tom coaches the uh, defense. Alex coaches the offense. I asked him, "Hey, fourth and one, <laughs> who's making the call?" It's still, Big Daddy gets it. He goes, "No, it's uh, you know, it's him. We talked it's about Alex. it, but yeah. uh, it's him making the call." I said, "Wow, that's uh, that's a, that's a very healthy relationship." Nice pass out to Shorey, and uh, as Sully said, we're going to hear both those names a lot tonight. And it looks like he's going to be right about three yards, right at the first down marker. You know, I think, John, anytime you have a Class D team playing a Class C team, there's always that question of can you hang with, you know, more kids and have more people to, to draw from the School's bigger, enrollment's more. So can you absorb a couple of blows and stay on the field and just make it a game? And so far, you've seen MCI A get the ball back and now start to get something to go together offensively. And so a lot of promising signs for uh, the Huskies as they try and even this thing up. So they started to move the chains and they moved the ball back a little bit. So it is about, uh, as you see, someone move on the offensive line there, but uh, it was about a half yard to go. Brandon Carney, our referee tonight, makes the call. So that's going to bring up third and five and a half. They initially said that was a first down where they marked that pass, but it was just a bit short. So now MCI with a bit more work to do here as it'll bring up third down and we'll call it six. Back at the 
Camden Academy 47-yard line. They need to get to the 42, just inside the 42. You've got to figure they might also be in four-down territory with the athletes they have. Kennedy rolling out. Gets it out to Shorey, and that's going to be more than enough for the first down. He takes it down inside the 25-yard line before he's tackled. That's a great uh, yards after catch there for Shorey. Yeah, nice touch on that pass, too, as he guts it. He gets it up just over the head. I think it's Case and Wildman that he uh, drops it up over, and just over his head. Nice touch, and then let the athlete do a little bit of work out there in the open field, and that is a first down. For the MCI Huskies. Yeah, 25-yard pickup all the way down to the 23-yard line of Hamden Academy. So MCI on the move here, trying to knock this one up. Kennedy looking, looking, fires it to Shorey. And Shorey does the rest, gets it down close to the 10-yard line. All they're doing, John, is knowing that they're they're fast. So, okay, let's yeah. go to the wide side of the field. Let's put a fast kid in field. I'll try and sprint out to this side. And, you know, moments in time, you're going to look back. Hard to know them as they come in, and, uh, you know, at, in the moment. But third, third and six at the 50-yard mark. Pick up 25 yards. You keep this thing going. I think that that's a huge play in the grand scheme of things for MCI. Let's see if they can uh, make it pay off. Another dozen yards there, down to the 11, so first down and 10. Huskies on the move. Kennedy going to keep it being pursued, and he's going to be sacked. He is sacked in the backfield. Great play by the linebacker, Brady Smith. He's the same idea, a little bit harder for a right-handed thrower to roll to his left. Ideally, you just get rid of that thing, right? Just try to fire it at somebody's yeah. feet. But, you know, that's, that's tough. I mean, the kid's right up on you. It's a 10-yard yard yard. loss. It's a tough one. Back to the 21. There's those intricate offensive uh, placards. So now you've got second and basically 20 here from the 21-yard line. Going to throw it across the middle. Oh, sure, he just couldn't hang on to it. Just off his fingertips. See, that's a tough one. Got your two best kids. Drop it to him. Put it right in the bucket. On the hands, maybe heard the footsteps a little bit. He did have uh, three Broncos all around him, but uh, found a little open spot. So with that ball just outside the 20, it's third down and 19 here for the Huskies as they look over at the sideline and check out those cards. As long as they know what it means, right? I guess that's, that's what matters. Seems to be working so far. <laughs> <laughs> On this drive it is. 37 seconds to go. And let's see what MCI has in their third and 19 playbook here. Can get a first down without scoring. Got to get it to the one. And oh my goodness, Kennedy in trouble again. Being pursued by Preston. And he'll throw it incomplete down that right sideline. So fourth and 19. Also, Preston. Well, last week or a few weeks ago, we saw a field goal attempt. That was kind of fun. I don't know if we're going to get one here. Yeah, Coach Bertrand said they'll <laughs> probably go for two. They've, they've got a kid who can kick, but they've had a little trouble getting the snap in the hole down. So I would say you're probably going to see a shot at the end zone here. So fourth and 19. Again, they don't have to score. They can get it down to the one and get a first down. But uh, you're certainly at the point where you're not going to punt this thing, so you might as well take a crack at the end zone. All right, fourth and 19 for MCI, and we've got movement everywhere, flags everywhere. Who moved first? MCI's reaction makes it look like it maybe it was them. It was. And it was. There was some movement on both sides there, but <laughs> there was a lot of movement. it might have been MCI that hopped first. Well, fourth and 19 is now fourth and 24. As they'll put the football right on the 25. They need to get to the one. The Huskies going the wrong way here. And boy, they use an awful lot of that clock looking over at those cards, don't they? Want to get that play right. So fourth down, 24. Oh, and Kennedy's going to be brought down from behind. 
And Smith again. He's got a good uh, sack dance. I like that. That was pretty good. <laughs> so turnover on downs. Hamden Academy will take over after the sack. Tries to step up into the pocket. Doesn't feel the pressure as uh, Smith comes off that blocker and takes him down. Tyler Coffin also pretty excited about it. Understandably so. So the Hamden Academy defense... I guess Ben don't break. They, uh, boy, they stiffened up there once uh, they got into the, uh, MCI got into the red zone. Absolutely did, and just a couple of sacks. Uh, you know, it's tough to when you're an offense that's trying to get it going, overcome those negatives. It's uh, it's a difficult uh, task to to make happen as you try and get some points here. So Hamden Academy back on offense, and Kotchendorfer's just going to keep it, and down the sideline he goes into MCI territory, still on his feet before he's finally brought down at the 38. What a run. What a run. They're telling the uh, chain gang to stay there. I don't see a flag I don't see field. a flag either. Oh. We got a block in the back, but I, I don't see Here it flag. is on the 40-yard line. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yep. A clip's going to bring that back. That's too bad for Hamden Academy. What a run by Koch, as they call him. My goodness. So instead of having the ball at the MCI 38, this is going to back the Broncos all the way up to their own 30. That's one on uh, Game Film Monday when you go through it. You know, he's thinking, I just padded, uh, you know, 40 yards to my stat line. Right. That's one where you get a little mad at your classmate for taking those away from you. <laughs> so when we come back for the second quarter, it's going to be a first and 13 for Hamden Academy at the end of one. The Broncos leading MCI 6 to nothing. We're back after this. Hi, I'm Mike Ford of Ford & Home Furnishings in Winslow. We've been in business since the 1940s. My mom and dad gave us a solid foundation built on respect and fairness to everyone who came through our doors. We've worked hard down through the generations to earn and keep your family's trust. And we're committed to continuing our exceptional customer service. These are just some of the things that got us to where we are today, and we hope they will bring you here too. I promise it'll be worth the trip. We had a lot of work to do, and we came in with a plan, and Troy took great care of us. He took us through all the options that were good for us, and we told him our needs, and he really, really came through with us. They yeah, brought us, well, we brought home some examples and come up with a decision, and they made it happen. Yeah. Mainwood Floors is a local business, and we really like to see local businesses boom. MCI Huskies football on WABI is sponsored by FormTech. Are you a high school student interested in machining or fabrication trades? FormTech Maine and Fenton has internship, scholarship, and full-time employment opportunities available. Aurora Healthcare Family Practice, bringing back healthcare of the past while expanding with its future, accepting new patients of all ages. And by Nitram Excavation, a local construction company at the heart of your community's infrastructure that delivers quality work on every project. So welcome back to the Weatherby Complex in Hamden. John Small along with Brian Sullivan. Second quarter about to get underway. First and 13 here for the Broncos from their own 30-yard line after the big run by Kotchendorfer wiped off the board. And here he goes again. This time he'll try the right side. And he's going to have to be hauled down from behind by Caleb Kennedy. Quarterback on quarterback there, but another great run by Koch. He's not the biggest kid, but he's pretty darn fleet of foot, isn't he? You know, coming in here, we were expecting a lot of passing uh, from this Bronco attack, but quarterback Nick Johnston, uh, has a concussion, not going to be able to get back into the uh, lineup uh, tonight, and we'll see. They're hopeful for next week, but in his stead, uh, you've got uh, this kid, Kachendoffer, no slouch. No, he normally he's out. You know, he's playing receiver and he's fast. And uh, man, we're seeing that tonight. So almost got a first down there. It's second down and two from the 41-yard line. Big pickup. The Broncos trying to pick up another first down. They'll go back to Coffin. Nice big hole there on that right side, and he plows right through it and gets the first down. 
We want to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to bring you this game. Please let them know that you appreciate it as well. And there you see the list, and there you see us up here. Where are, there we are, Sully, over there in the stage left or stage right. What is that? There's, my There's hand your hand, hand up right there. <laughs> It's a uh, homecoming here for the Broncos, and they had uh, you know a pep rally this afternoon, as you do during homecoming. So the football team uh, actually had a little surprise up their sleeves. Here's the pitch out to Thornwall, and he's got a hole on that left side. Boy, the offensive line doing a great job tonight. Gets it into Huskies territory. He's brought down at about the 49-yard line, picked up six. Yeah, great run by him. So uh, earlier today in the pep rally, they get out there, and uh, they're all having a little fun. The uh, football team treated everybody to a cheer. They learned to cheer. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, it was actually pretty good. I saw Is a there video, video evidence. I was going to say I video evidence of this. a little this. video of it. Uh, and also to, to tease our halftime interview coming up, you think it's time to go, uh, you know, get a, a soda or something like that. No way. <laughs> Former sports director Tim Throckmorton is going to join us at the half. He's now the uh, varsity golf coach here uh, for the Broncos, and uh, they're having a heck of a season. Boy, what a, what a, what a life. Found a way to still play golf. Yeah, I know. You All know, the time. It's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Here's Coffin again. Oh, nice spin move. And it's going to take a gang of Huskies to bring him down, but not before he gets the first down. Yeah, just a hard nose uh, run there by Coffin. I've seen a few of those throughout the day here. Gets uh -oh. up a, a twist yeah. his ankle a little oh, bit. Boy. Broncos already dealing with a lot of injuries. And there you see Coach St. Hart helping him off the field. My goodness, they can ill afford to lose him. Picked up the first down. Already unofficially 63 yards on the ground tonight, including the 22-yard touchdown run. Yeah, you hate to see that. Yeah, he's still, to yeah, any weight on that. Yeah, thing. he's still hopping around the sideline there. We will keep an eye on that. So in his stead, uh, Thornwall probably gets the majority of the carries here. First and 10 from the MCI 45. And he does. He gets the first carry here. Splits right through a couple of uh, tacklers and gets it down close to a first down. That's probably going to be about a half yard short, a nine yard pickup. In, Co in talking with Coach Bertrand about what he expected from Hamden leading up to this, he said, you know, they're starting to realize their potential. And that's a little unsettling if you're the opponent yeah. because you, you see the athletes they've got out here. Kids that got a little, little quickness, so that first step, uh, a couple of backs now carrying that uh, different skill sets out there, starting to realize that potential. And that's not what you want as you uh, come in on homecoming. I tell you, in talking with uh, Coach St. Hard this week, he's excited. You know, and he's a football guy, played at Husson, he's, he's stayed here, he loves being here, and he's excited to be coaching these guys. Second and one. Here's Thornwall again. And again, just has a big hole, got to give a great shout out to the Hamden Academy offensive line tonight. They're just opening things up, aren't they? Yeah, another big hole there as uh, next man up, Thornwall. It's another big chunky yardage, another first down for the Broncos. And it's a, a sign of a, a quality football team where you can go to, you got your backup quarterback, you've got, you know, Thornwall's going to get carries anyway, but he's not your, your primary ball carrier. You see a couple of different people out of spots. They're missing a couple guys off up front on the offensive line, just getting some big chunks of yardage, trying to wear down that Husky defense. The Broncos moving it down the field again from the MCI 30, a first down. They'll spread things out a little bit here. Coach mentioned, you know, he wanted to probably lean a little heavier to the uh, run there, and there's a, a snap to the quarterback that didn't go quite right, and uh, somehow Portwall wound up with it and got it back to the line of scrimmage, so uh, saved the play there. Yeah, sometimes better to be uh, lucky than good. Those kids maybe have a little spike ball or something like that in their, uh, their pass because just a little deflection goes to him. Don't try to make too much of it. Straight ahead. Live the play another day. Got it back to the line of scrimmage, so second and ten. Six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. And then Academy on top, six nothing. Kotchendoffer going to keep it. Picks his way up the middle before he's finally brought down by a bunch of Huskies. You can tell that 
as a football player, he is playing quarterback, but he seems to uh, be very comfortable running the football. It seems like uh, the pass is secondary in uh, what he'd like to do. It, 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 he does enjoy turning it upfield and trying to make what he can with his feet, and he's been very successful with it so far. Picked up six yards there before I believe it was Caleb Rush who got him. And if you figure your MCI, their preparation, they're thinking, okay, we're working on passing and, you know, trying to take shots and things like that. And I'm sure they were aware that Johnston is uh, potentially not going to be there. But some of their prep is probably throughout the week preparing for, you know, chucking the ball around the yard. So third and four from the 24. Going to throw it. Kind of a little bubble pass out there. It is complete, and then uh, lost the ball at the end there as he got pushed back, but that was complete to Trey Collier, who's in there, just a freshman for the Broncos. Coaching staff didn't want to give him an option. Just said, all right, quick, get it out there. Let's get this kid involved. And another first down for Hamden Academy. This is a big offensive drive for Hamden, just chewing up that clock as they methodically make their way down the field. And, uh, you know, that's a nice one to have in the repertoire. That's a good way to get into the, the rhythm of the game, to get that out in the flats and just uh, get a kid going. Yeah, needed four yards. You got four and a half. And very impressed with the Broncos where they keep plays going. They gain a couple extra yards even when Huskies are hanging all over them. So first down and ten from the 20. It's Thornwall. Going to spread it out to the right side before he's pushed out of bounds. Gets it down to about the 15-yard line. Maybe the 14th. We'll see where they mark it. Just a reliance on speed. Make a break for the sideline. Try and cut it upfield. Ends up getting a nice little chunk. We'll give him five yards. So second down and five. And that's just it. Most of the time here, Sully Hamden Academy, they're getting four, five, six yards on every carry. That's all you need, right? That math does check out. That'll get you a couple of first downs along the way here. And every now and then you get a bigger uh, bigger piece of the pie and find yourself knocking on the end zone's door. So second and five from the 15. Hamden Academy with the only score in the game so far. A 22-yard Tyler Coffin run back in the first quarter. Knocking on the door again. Kotchendorfer. Going to hand it off to Wildman. Just mixing up a little bit. He fumbled the ball. Who fell on it? And it looks like it's MCI, ba uh, MCI football. We are back after this. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the sparks that unite us to the passions that drive us. We're driven by the things we love. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together. Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. With the largest network of parts and care to keep you firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. All right, first play for MCI, and Kennedy's going to find Jackson Foster. Somehow, he threaded that football in there, got 11 yards, first down. That was a spicy one, back across the body, <laughs> but uh, goes in the playbook, as, uh, or in the staff book as a first down. So first and 10 for the Huskies from their own 21 after they forced the fumble. Hamden Academy was driving down the field, but the Huskies' defense came up big. Kennedy fires it out on that right sideline, intended for Shorey, incomplete. He has put the ball in the air nine times tonight, so... As you mentioned, they wanted to throw it, you know, close to 20 times or halfway there with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, good job by Andy Hennigan to, to know exactly where MCI wants to get that thing and uh, try to slide out into that flat, but uh, it's gotten the way and made things a little too difficult. Second down and 10 for MCI. Looking to 
even the score or go ahead before we go to the locker room. And Kennedy's been in trouble back there all night. This time he spins out of it. And he'll dive ahead. Boy, talk about making something out of nothing. He looked like he might be sacked. And then he made a nice little spin move to the right. Picked up a bunch of yards. Yeah, nice job reversing field. That's an athletic kid right there. And then you think, you mentioned earlier, moments in time. Here you go. Three minutes to go. Down by six. Third and four. Can you keep the ball? You don't have to score points. You'd love to going into the half. You don't have to score points, but you don't want to give it right back to the Broncos after you just had that big turn of events to get the ball away from them as they're marching down the field. So big spot here for the Huskies trying to keep the football. So picked up six yards on that carry. So it's going to be third down and a little bit shorter. And here's Kennedy again being pursued. Tried to spin out of it. And now there's a block. We'll see. Did they set a clean block as Kennedy got back close to the 30-yard line before he got pushed out of bounds? The referee was right there in front of him. Yeah. I think the kid got his head in front. I, I think, think he did. Was, it was clean. He, and if, uh, if it wasn't, ref got a great look at it. We'll, we'll show it to you again. What Boy, do you guys think at home? I tell you, he was awfully close. Hard to see it there. It's one of those things when you see it in real time, it kind of looks bad, but well, you got that, <laughs> got it awfully close. A yard short of the first down. What do you do here? You're fourth and one deep in your own end, but you got some athletes. Can you get one yard? I'd probably go out there, make them think I'm going to run it, try and get them to jump off sides, and then punch it. <laughs> I don't know, Coach Burke trying over his year. He's been he's been known to take a few chances, but he got short. He's got Shorey out there. So they're gonna punt it away. Still in the game, just six six points. Gotta watch for fake punts though. He's been he's been known to do that a few times over the over the years. But Shorey's gonna kick it away. And Hamden Academy, Kotchendorfer's gonna take it. Brings it into MCI territory and he's knocked down at about the forty yard line. We're back after this. No one gives you more bang for your buck than LS Tractor, the hard-working tractor with more features, more performance, and more warranty protection. And no one is more committed to making sure you're happy with your LS Tractor than Pin Bay Tractor in Clinton. For a dependable tractor at a great price, see the lineup of LS Tractors at Pin Bay Tractor, Bangor Road, Clinton. Come buy a tractor from our old man. Hammond Lumber Company has been a trusted partner of professional contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners for generations. It's the level of trust that Hammond Lumber has earned by providing an extensive selection of products and materials from industry-leading suppliers with guidance and support through every stage of any project, including delivery of materials throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company is, has been, and will always be your building project partner. So there you see number three, the quarterback, the backup quarterback for Hamden Academy with another great run. He is just slippery as he picks up eight yards on the, we'll see it right here. Yep, cuts it up the field. Little scamper, nice cut. I thought the Broncos were going to try and come out and play a little pace and get going quick, but uh, coach decided to call timeout and talk this thing over with a minute or two to go. Well, we're back at it again next Friday night. We're heading to Oakland. Mesolonsky Eagles and the Skowhegan River Hawks will be in Oakland next Friday night. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. And this is the first time we're going to be at Mesolonsky for a Friday night football game. Can't wait for that. New lights, huh? How long have the lights been up? That's a good question. We'll find out next Friday, won't I we? I wish I knew the answer. So we'll get Mesolonsky Skowhegan next Friday night. Got a good one here. And then Academy on top, 6 nothing. They're driving again with a minute two to go in the first half. It'll be a second down and two for the Broncos from the MCI 31. There you see the MCI fans that have made the, the trip up I-95 from Pittsfield tonight. MCI fans always travel well. Just a tradition of winning, you know. Yeah. That, that'll get people that to come, come follow you to uh, Hamden on a on a Friday evening. So second down and two after the timeout. Minute two to go here in the first half. Broncos would love to add to that lead before we head to the locker rooms. 
Kochendopper. Oh, going to throw it. Lost it. Question is, was it going forward, the arm, or did he fumble it? No call yet. Looks like MCI is going to jump on it. We got replay? They're not going to get another look at it, but we are. Let's see this thing. Do we have replay? I think this is a fumble. Oh, Just yeah. Going forward. I, that's a tough one. Tough to see. So, the turnover, MCI gets it back. Not a lot of time here, though. 56 seconds in the first half. And they got a long way to go. They're at their own 30. Let's see what they decide to do. Yeah, and we, will, we will not go to replay. What, what do you uh, do here if you're MCI? Take a shot at this thing, or are you happy with your lot in life and take it into the Well, you've got half? two really good athletes back there in Kennedy and Shore. If you get a big run... I think maybe that changes things. They got five wide receivers. Oh my god! Four to one side. They got them all stacked up on the right side. That is an interesting formation. Going to throw it out there. Going to have to have some blockers. And it is Shorey, right? He picked up nine yards. So okay, that's a good start if you're MCI. They got to hurry, or they call timeout. They call timeout. And that's a look that. Uh, we're seeing for the first time tonight. Not sure if MCI's run it in weeks past, but that's when you save for special occasions when you need to get down the field in a hurry. Okay, you're not ready for this thing. Just one more block and you spring that thing. They picked up nine yards. It's going to be second and one, and the yardage really doesn't matter here, right? Because they just got to get it down the field. 47.6 seconds remaining in this first half. Just the Tyler Coffin run for the Broncos so far. That's it for scoring. A couple of timely takeaways yep. for the Huskies to keep that score at that 6 nothing level. MCI defense has played very well. And an academy, you know, for having a lot of guys where they're not used to being. Doing very well tonight. They have been bitten by the injury bug and... At least four starters out tonight for the Broncos, including the quarterback. So we'll see what is up MCI's sleeve here. As they get a little closer to midfield, that opens the playbook up a little bit, doesn't it? It does. you got to be careful. You know, I just, uh, maybe it's as I get older, got a couple kids now, you got to be very cautious. Look <laughs> little, both ways. A little more concerned. With old hands, you know. It's, <laughs> I, like to, I like to just be a little, uh, you know. Go slow. You can't really do that with 47 seconds, can you? Well, Caleb Kennedy, a high snap, and he's just going to have to throw that one. I thought he was going to throw it away, but no. He connects with Shorey. I don't know how he completed that pass. I thought he was just throwing it away. He was in trouble. Yeah, this is too much for me. I, I, my nerves are... <laughs> this is not conservative. He had jarred at the moment, but catches it. First down, out of bounds, in business. 12-yard pickup to the 49-yard line of MCI. So, Huskies in business here with 40 seconds to go. Boy, that's just a great pass from Kennedy to Shorey. And the kid's just, how athletic is he? He scoop up that bad snap, makes yep. it go. My goodness. And now everything's, you get to keep one of those oh-so-valuable timeouts as well. So, the oh, middle of the field is uh, an option to you as well. Now you get that four-wide look closer on our side of the field. We'll see if they, another quick screen. And they get it out to Shorey. Shorey can't get away from the Broncos tacklers that time as he pretty much gets it back to the line of scrimmage. And that one just took too long to yeah. come together. Same exact play, but it just, whether it was his handle or a little bit of pressure that he felt, but that one was a quick screen, just wasn't quick, so just a screen and everybody in the stadium saw it was coming. Yeah, actually lost the yard there, so they'll put that ball back at the 50-yard line, so it's going to be second down and 11. Again, that's not really all that important. As there's only 28 seconds to go. So we'll see what MCI decides to do here with 28 seconds to go. Well, we want to remind you, you can get caught up on all the local Friday night football action with first and five. That is tonight on TV5 News at 11. Ben and Connor will bring you all the highlights. They're out gathering tonight. Including the highlights from this one. It's always so interesting to me as we do these games, the difference in what you wear from game one to, I mean, this is game, what, four of the season? Yep. Here you are, our fourth week of the year. And, you know, layers, but, you know, a month from now, goodness, what are we going to need? 
Shovels. Let's, uh, let's not think about that. <laughs> Even tonight's not bad. Yeah, you need a jacket. But it's a beautiful night. There's some who are going without. I see some shorts. I see some T-shirts. Some hardy folk. All right, second down here. Reynolds in motion. Kennedy going to get in trouble. Oh, but he steps up out of the defense, away from the defense. Still directing traffic, and that time he's going to throw it away. I think he got hit as he threw. You know, I wonder here, John, you got everybody thinking one thing. Try to run a little draw, you know, just get, look at this. There's some hardy folk, look at that. Look at those guns. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, you need one of our directors, Brett Worsler, up there with the shorts tonight. That's his little brother's shirt. That's uh, the smedium on, on oh Brett. Oh, boy, here we go. I'm staying out of this one. <laughs> he is a hardy mainer. So third down here, 19 seconds to go. MCI, they've got some athletes. That's what they try to do here. If you can get a big play, get out of bounds, you've got a, you got a crack at the end zone maybe. Kennedy rolling right. Going to throw Ooh. it downfield. Oh, what a great play over there by Hennigan. Almost just knocked it away, but had a chance at the INT there. So now with 11.7. Well, what we're talking about here, we got a flag down. Could be rough. Yep, we do have a flag. Oh, they're talking to the Hammond coach. Holding. Oh, they'll decline that. So it'll bring up fourth down. I think you might as well go for it, right? And the heave one down here. Well, you don't want to give it back to them with, and then they can heave one. I mean, so. you're gonna you're gonna take five or six seconds off the clock, right? See, I'm I'm thinking, you know, I'm. I'm throwing it all in there. You're, yeah, geez. you're, you're, you're you've changed. Yeah, you've lived a full life. You're just you're ready to <laughs> throw caution to the wind. <laughs> well, MCI is not. They will punt it away. Shorey gets it away. Kind of a low line drive. And oh boy, Kachendoffer had trouble with that there. So he just smartly dives on it. And he's a little shaken up. Oh boy. Hamden Academy cannot afford another injury, and uh, he's trying to get to the sideline, but he's going to... Holding that ankle. Oh, my goodness. You just uh, hate to see that for the Broncos. And he's going to need some help off the field. My goodness. Number 19 was trying to help him, and he decided he's going to... Go his own way. We'll see how they wow. handle this thing. At this point, even if he's a little banged up, you probably just take a knee and you have to right call here, it right? Half, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 whoever's going to take the snap. But my goodness, you already have your starting QB out. You have one of your wide receivers out. You've got Coffin one out of the game. And now let's see what he did here. Is he just oh he just turned around? Probably just turned an ankle maybe? Because he was trying to dive on that football. I mean, I don't want to speculate. Hard for us to know up here. And he's. You see him there. He's hurting. Oh, boy. Do not like to see that. And uh, things got a little quiet here. And so now I saw number 12 was uh, throwing the ball earlier, although Hamden doesn't have a 12 on that's, the roster. That's Gavin Monyak. Okay, there you yep. go. Yep, they list him as number 15 on the program, but I'm pretty, we'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure he's 12. <laughs> My goodness, they're not taking a knee as he's going to get sacked, but uh, that was a little aggressive there by hand in there. Just, hey, we're going to run the play. I'm going to go talk to both head coaches at uh, the half here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, a lot of developments in this first half, but uh, I guess the key one is that Hamden Academy is on top. Six to nothing, but uh, it's become a mash unit down there for the Broncos as Coffin went off the field and now Kachendoffer went off the field. And you see Coffin still on the bench and he's he he can't even make it to the locker room. That is oh my goodness. So we'll regroup. Let's see what happens here. We'll, we'll try to get some updates as uh, we, we come into the halftime uh, break here. So at the half, it is Hamden Academy six, MCI nothing. We'll return to the Weatherby Complex right after this. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. 
We had a lot of work to do, and we came in with a plan, and Troy took great care of us. He took us through all the options that were good for us, and we told him our needs, and he really, really came through with us. Yeah, brought us, well, we brought home some examples and come up with a decision, and they made it happen. Yeah. Mainwood Floors is a local business, and we really like to see local businesses boom. This Hamden Academy Broncos football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Kimberly's at the Marina, a hidden gem located on the Penobscot River in Hamden. Dirigo Nutrition. Get your tea, shakes, and more only at Dirigo Nutrition. Located in the heart of Hamden at 60 Main Road North. Healthy starts here. And Angelo's Pizzeria in Hamden. Pizza, subs, salads, and more made with the freshest and finest ingredients. Stop by or order online today. All are excited to cheer on the Hamden Academy Broncos. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. The better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. MCI Huskies football on WABI is sponsored by Skills Inc. Now hiring direct support professionals for all shifts and locations throughout Central Maine. Contact us today and start your new career tomorrow. Nitram Excavation, a local construction company at the heart of your community's infrastructure that delivers quality work on every project. And by FormTech. Are you a high school student interested in machining or fabrication trades? FormTech Maine and Clinton has internships, scholarship, and full-time employment opportunities available. Today's high school football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Darby's Restaurant, a local favorite since 1986, located in the heart of downtown Belfast. Colburn Shoe Store, the oldest shoe store in America, where you can find quality footwear for the whole family. And Rolly's Bar and Grill, we make it our mission to provide every patron with fresh, everyday fun. Support your local high school athletics and make a difference. Stay a step ahead and get your local news first on WABI TV5 News at 4. First, with the weather information you need to plan your night and the day ahead. First, with the stories that matter to you from the local news team you know and trust. And TV5 News at 4 always brings you something special, too. You never know what you might see. But you will see it first. When you join us weekdays on WABI TV5 News at 4. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay, and fall colors are spreading, especially orange, the color of Luke. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes just like yours. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. And welcome back to the Weatherby Complex. We are at halftime of this high school football Friday night game at Hamden Academy right now leading MCI 6 to nothing. Our halftime report is sponsored by Coastal Auto Parts, owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. John Small and along with Brian Sullivan and Sully, look who we found. My goodness, you never know who you're going to run into. That's right. Jim, I, I, Jim Throckmorton. I hang around Hampton Academy a lot these days. <laughs> yeah. You How look good it, in purple. It does. Yeah, it looks good. How is it possible to be to live in Dedham and be the mayor of Hampton? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Well, I, uh, five years ago, right after I retired, I started uh, as a JV golf coach at Hampton Academy. They were desperately needing somebody, so I, I took that job. Five years later, I'm still doing it. Now I'm the varsity coach. Um, I'm also the varsity tennis coach here, and uh, last year I coached uh, JV baseball and uh, was assistant coach for a football team. So um, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and uh, um, yeah, just master of none, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, from what I hear, the golf team's pretty good. Yeah, we're I think 12 one and one now. We're going um, to the KVAC uh, the uh, the second round of the the playoffs. They call it a, the shootout. That will be a week from tomorrow, and then uh, the following week we gear up for the state championships. So uh, golf is a little bit quicker than some of the sports. Uh, we're into state finals uh, um, in a couple of weeks. How have you? 
enjoyed that transition to, you know, being, having 5 o'clock, 6.30, you know, your, your times that you're required to be in such a place for 40 years, and now uh, your life is your own. You know, you can be out and about and all those sort of things. You seem to have really uh, taken it and run with it. Well, you know, I guess the thinking is you have to have some hobbies, and then you have to have some some uh, some things to really put your teeth into to, to get to get into, like the coaching for me. Um, they're, uh, I'm really grateful that they're willing to have me here. Um, the kids are awesome. Um, uh, you know, uh, for over the four sports that I've coached in the last couple of years, um, uh, I've met you know hundreds of the Hamden Academy students, boys and girls, with some of the sports. So it's really been a blessing for me. Um, I feel really lucky. I, I always admired the coaches and the administrators uh, for high school sports. That's, that's who our, our peers are, really, in, in broadcasting and sports anyway. And uh, so, you know, just, just having... Um, being able to do this is uh, is really the, the, the gift for me, really. That's uh, something that Coach St. Tard, when we were talking to him this week, really emphasized. And he's first-year head coach, and uh, he could not talk enough about how much support he has here at Hamden Academy as a first-year coach. Yeah, you know, I think uh, part of it is... Um, you, know, you have to sort of meld your, into the you know how the, the school system does its athletics. Um, some are you know all athletics, and some are really supportive. And, and this this town is really supportive. And, and also you know you have to you have the kids have to buy into what you're doing as a coach, and then you have to sort of coach in sort of uh, you know there's, there's a there's, there's a way of coaching that's not you can't you can't just come in and be a bull, and uh, you know especially in a football program you can't just be a bull. You can't aren't going to buy into that. Um, so I, I think Robinson's done an amazing job. Uh, kids love him. I, of course, I, I kind of know firsthand because um, uh, Reed Manhart, my stepson, is uh, one of the players, number 55, the lineman, plays O-line and playing well tonight, too. So we hear about it when, when he comes home, and uh, it's all been good. Um, and I was an assistant coach with this team last year, and the new coaching staff came in, and Robinson has uh, some of his former teammates that he played with at Hudson uh, coaching him now. So that's great. Um, it was uh, really fun being with the guys last year, and uh, it's really fun watching them because I kind of know some of them, most of them. Um, there haven't been a lot of them graduating. There are only two seniors that are really getting a lot of significant playing time now. So uh, there's still a young group, um, junior heavy. So um, whatever happens this year, it's, it's, it's kind of a building thing. Next year's going to be even better, I'm sure of that. Um, so good things are coming for Hamden football. If they're getting, they're getting, uh, they're getting into that. Well, they had that O for three season. You know, uh, they had a just a rough time for three years in a row, and now they're on the way up. So that's that's great news. And for your uh, squad, you're, you had a big win, big two wins in uh, the KVAC. What? Prelim there? What do you call that? A quarterfinal? Uh, yeah. It'd be it, Bangor and Brewer, it's, it's those guys. a little guys. bit of a sectional. They have uh, uh, four four sectionals. So one team from each section goes to a week from tomorrow into the shootout. So there'll be four or five teams down at Brunswick. Well, uh, there'll be one automatic qualifier for the states. Uh, those that don't qualify for the states have to, since I know more information than you wanted, uh, <laughs> the following Tuesday will play off to try to get into the states. So there are several opportunities to try to get into the uh, state championships in golf. So, you know, you're coaching, but I guess the big question is how often do you get to play? Yeah, um, I, 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 I think it's really cool if you're, a, if you're a student of the game, which we all have to be to, to, to play or to coach. You're, you have to be a student every, all your life. You're a student of the game. You never master it. So just talking to the kids about it uh, is helpful to me, too. Just, uh, you know, I, I, when I do get out and play, I, I'm more careful and make the, you know, good decisions. Don't pull out driver all the time, Sully. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. <laughs> I don't play enough to not have fun. <laughs> Uh, Throck, okay, you're broadcasting forever. You're coaching golf now. Do does broadcasting and all the lessons you learned doing that, trying to keep your cool, whatever you have to deal with, translate to golfing? You know, you can be nerve wracking out there. Any any lessons that translate? <laughs> well, there was one kid that spiked a club when he was didn't, uh -oh. have, didn't have a very good shot with it. And kind of said, oh, you know, we don't really do that. Um, uh, so you know, it, it's it's a gentleman's game, Sully, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, John, you you know that too, right? You, <laughs> Just, yes, uh, I do. You play by the I know you look there. right at Sully, yeah. but yeah, okay. You, yeah. you have to. And uh, it's helpful to, you know, speak with an English accent uh, yes. very quietly. And, and, you know, just it's it's an honor thing, too. You know, you're keeping your own score. So I, I think uh, we don't go hysterical on the course, no. 
1987, 1992, People Magazine, Sexiest Man of the Year. You're in consideration. Don't make the magazine. Any regrets? Um, no, we had, on your show in the morning, we did uh, The Sexiest Man last week. Uh, did, you, did you listen to that? I, 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 did, I heard yeah, about it yeah, afterwards. It was, it was, the, the, the thing was, the stories were about the three sexiest men alive who all had ACL tears. <laughs> And, and well, I have had one too. That's pretty I know. specific. So, I, okay. I Where do you think I got the idea? Well, Emily, my wife, is standing right over there, so I, I don't know. She'll have to speak for. for I that. think that's where she kind of gave me the idea. If, if that, I get uh, any votes. But anyway, it's great to see you. Can we yes. just have a big group oh, yeah, here? Oh, 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 here we go. I, I want to say hi to a couple of really good friends of mine, uh, Mark Redicker Redico, Redico and uh, Herb Air. Oh my God, there they are right down there, waving at you. They do all the work, by the way. They do. Yes, they do. These two up here in the booth. The last time we were here. Well, it was our last game. Mark and Brock are going back. Mark, I know. Timmy, Timmy, I know. It was a fantastic. <laughs> it was just, it was uh, oh, just a, a sight to behold. But it's great to have you back. Uh, yeah, great to have you, Throck. And uh, I, we, we could talk all night. Well, we got to go to break here. Hamden Academy leading six nothing. We'll come back right after this. <laughs> Live coverage of high school football on WABI-TV5 is sponsored by Coastal Auto Parts, owned and operated by a main family that cares. Hammond Lumber Company, a fourth-generation family business serving contractors, homeowners, and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and special services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Maine Wood Floors, buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and DeKalb Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. Next Home Experience. Find your next home and get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. And by Renewal by Anderson. A better way to a better window. Set up your free consultation today. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the sparks that unite us to the passions that drive us. We're driven by the things we love. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together, Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most. With the largest network of parts and care to keep you firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Why do folks travel for miles to shop at Fortin's Home Furnishings in Winslow? Selection, 24,000 square feet filled with products for every room in your home. Quality, we carry famous name brands that you know and trust. And price, you'll always get the best value when you shop at Fortin's. It's all under one roof at Fortin's Home Furnishings. And remember, the best deals are at Fortin's Home Furnishings in Winslow on the corner of the Carter Memorial Bridge. Cross over the bridge to Fortin's. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings, and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. MCI Huskies Football on WABI is sponsored by Skills, Inc. Now hiring direct support professionals for all shifts and locations throughout Central Maine. Contact us today and start your new career tomorrow. Nitram Excavation, a local construction company at the heart of your community's infrastructure that delivers quality work on every project. And by FormTech. Are you a high school student interested in machining or fabrication trades? FormTech Maine and Clinton has internship, scholarship, and full-time employment opportunities available. And welcome back to the Weatherby Complex where we are at halftime. And the Hamden Academy Broncos leading the MCI Huskies 6 to nothing. It's kind of been, I guess, what would you say, Sully? You've kind of played between the 20s for the most part tonight with the exception of the Coffin 22-yard run. And uh, defenses have been the story so far. Yeah, MCI's. And injuries. MCI's defense keeping them in it. Hamden a little banged up coming in. A couple of injuries in that first half. Quarterback. Aiden Kochendorfer limps off. We'll see if we see him again here in the second half. Tyler Coffin also visibly injured as he uh, tried to make his way into the locker room at the half. So we'll see. It does look like we're going to see Gavin Moniak uh, in this second half as he's trying to uh, get acclimated with his center, throwing the ball a little bit there on the, on the sideline right in front of us. So uh, I think it's going to be 
the third quarterback to start things off for Hammond when they get the ball, but offensively for MCI, you you mentioned it, John. You, you've been able to move it, just uh, haven't been able to move it over that goal line. And a little insider information from Throck before he left. I guess Gavin has been injured, had a shoulder issue, and he just got cleared to play yesterday. And now here he is being called on to go in there and play quarterback, may have to throw it. Yeah. And, I, he's, and he's warming up on the sideline. I wonder if we're going to see a little bit, just, just looking at this kid on the sideline, number number 12, throwing the ball around, I wonder if we'll see a little bit more of that offense that uh, we would anticipated seeing, just uh, the way he carries himself, which would be a little more pass heavy. So Hennigan's going to kick it off for Hamden Academy. And boy, that's a boot. You don't see many high school kickers kick it into the end zone. Yeah, that kid can boot it. That, wow. Uh, Throck mentioned that to me as well when we were chatting, that he can, uh, sometimes teams don't know it's coming, and he just blasts it over their head, and you saw it there. So MCI will go back on offense from their own 20-yard line, trying to get something going. They, As Sully said, they've been able to move the football, just have not been able to punch it in just yet. The offensive line of MCI has had a little bit of trouble with that defensive line of Hamden Academies. They've been chasing Kennedy all night. There's a quick pass out to Shorey. Just get it out quickly, and he gets a nice gain out of it up to about the 27-yard line. Picked up about seven. Yeah, just go fast. Just go fast. Get your ball out there. Get into a kid who can. Uh, has got some wiggle. I like that play, especially out of the gate. Get something positive. Let's get a first down. Look at that. Hamden, even the best pass rush in all the land is not going to be able to contend with that one. Yeah, actually, nine-yard pickup. They mark it at the 29-yard line. So it's going to be second down and one here as we've got players going in motion for the Huskies, including Reynolds. And, boy, this has kind of been the... Oh, picked off. Picked off by Hennigan. As Kennedy, as I was going to say, it's kind of been the story all night. He's been running around back there and finally got burned a little bit there as he hung one up, and it's picked off by Hennigan for Hamden Academy. Yeah, you can only play with fire so much before you do get burned. And evades the rush, seen that a few times, and just relying on that arm strength to get out there, but uh, throws it into double coverage. And now Hamden with a big turnover. See what they can do with it. So we talked about it. We're going to see the third-string quarterback now, Gavin Monyak, sophomore. And let's see what the Broncos decide to do here, if they'll try to keep it on the ground or if they'll have him put it up. From the 20-yard line, they're going to hand it off. Thornwall, that's a pretty good decision. He takes it down inside the 10. Nice gain. He took a big hit at he the end of that. that. I didn't know if we might see a little... Yellow come in, his head went flying backwards, but that is a, a big hit by, uh, I didn't see the Husky defender, but a great carry there by Thornwall. 13-yard pickup down to the Look seven. collision here. Oh, goodness. Yeah, was that uh, Caleb Kennedy I coming think it in was there the making that stick? He might be a little angry about that INT. Just guessing. All right, first and goal for the Broncos from the seven. Thornwall again. Oh, he's got all kinds of space. Touchdown. And, well, that answered that question. If you don't really want your quarterback throwing the ball, just hand it off twice and you get a touchdown. There you go. Yeah, that's good offense. Just a good feel for that. Just, uh, you know, waiting to see the hole open up. Good job by Thornwall. Making his way to the outside. Don't cut it up in too early. Let it develop. Out around the corner. And then he goes. 12 nothing Broncos. I think if you're Hamden Academy, you got to feel pretty good. All the injuries, you come right out, you get a turnover, and you get a quick score. So the Broncos going to go for two here. Monyak has got Thornwall right beside him, and he's going to give it to him. Oh, big hole up the middle. Easy two-point conversion. 14-0. Hamden Academy on top. And we'll come back to Hamden right after this. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. 
pdqdoor.com. This Hamden Academy Broncos football game on WABI is proudly sponsored by the following local businesses. Kimberly's at the Marina, a hidden gem located on the Penobscot River in Hamden. Dirigo Nutrition. Get your teas, shakes, and more only at Dirigo Nutrition. Located in the heart of Hamden at 60 Main Road North. Healthy starts here. And Angelo's Pizzeria in Hamden. Pizza, subs, salads, and more made with the freshest and finest ingredients. Stop by or order online today. All are excited to cheer on the Hamden Academy Broncos. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. So really, it couldn't be a worse start for MCI of this third quarter, and couldn't be a better start for Hamden Academy. And again, and again, we'll... Get it to bounce into the end zone. So MCI will start at their 20 again. After the interception, two plays later, it's into the end zone for Thornwall, and it's a 14-0 lead after the two-point conversion for the Broncos. Yeah, if you're MCI, you need to get something going here, right? You've been uh, reliant on uh, your two athletes, Caleb Kennedy and Drew Shorey, a couple of junior captains. See, you know, you tried to go quick, see if you can't spring one. What else you got in that playbook? Maybe try and... You know, catch him off guard, a little, little draw look, get somebody else in on the action. But, uh, you know, it's not desperate times yet, but you, you need to get something positive here. You know, down, down two scores, don't give the ball back. Let's get a couple first downs. It's all on the other side of the 50. Kennedy rolling out. Nice little pass to Shorey, who is brought down about the 28-yard line. Eight-yard pickup, and there you go. And they got to work a little quicker, I think, too. You don't want to leave Kennedy back there because the Hamden Academy rush is getting to him. Yep, and there is a little bit of a different look. He just sits down in a hole, you know, instead of trying to go to the outside. And he didn't feel as though he was down, and I don't know that he was either, but... Yeah. Uh, Hamden Academy is going to call a timeout here. So they put the ball at the 27-yard line, 7-yard pickup. It's second down and three here for MCI. To the MCI fans across the way tonight. Fan Cam tonight, sponsored by Maine Wood Floors. Buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and Decal Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. Nothing better than the look of a freshly worked over hardwood floor. Polished. I don't know what that looks like. I have three golden retrievers. So our floors maybe not in the best of shape. I don't know, you know, why I need to share that, but back when you were doing, you know, radio <laughs> and doing the basketball games, you know, you go to that first one of the the season, you see that nice new floor. Does look good. All right, so coach St. Hard did I saw something he didn't like there. Called a timeout early here in the third quarter. So it's a second down and 3 for the Huskies. There's a quick give to Bernier. And, boy, he's going nowhere. It's Hennigan. He's been everywhere tonight. Drops him for a loss. Yeah, talk about a renaissance. I mean, he does a little bit of everything, right? Offense, defense, kicks it. And that, you know, trying to give him a little bit of a different look. Coach Bertrand said we want to get him involved a little bit more. And there's Hennigan coming up, making that big stick. And drops the one to the outside. But just great a tackle. great pursuit angle by Hennigan. Tell you that uh, defensive front for the Broncos has just been all over the place tonight. So they dropped Bernier for a loss of one to the 26. Third down. So Kennedy will send all his receivers out there. Five receivers set. Another high snap. He brings it down. Thinking about keeping it, he's just got nowhere to go. Tries to pitch it, and oh my goodness, he throws a pick, and it is taken down. Did he get in? That's the question. Oh, they're going to put it at the one. Oh, the big guy, Mason Jellison, on the line. You think you want a touchdown, and 
Come on. I cannot Close. believe Come on. they did not give him a touchdown on that one. <laughs> oh, you know what? Put him in the backfield and give him that one again. <laughs> look at this. He tries to go a little shot put look at this thing, and he bats that thing yeah, around. And not, it's just not a good decision do there. Do we have another look at this? Okay. There, rolls out. Desperate times. Tries to heave it out. Bats it up. Makes the bat and catches right. it. Let's, did he get in? Let's see. He's carrying it. Ping pong it around. Oh, I think he did I get in. I think he got in. <laughs> Those guys don't get that many chances. Come on. <laughs> Referee. Brandon Carney. <laughs> who we said. We told him it would be nice to him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, from the one, I don't see 75 in the back. <laughs> he's, on, he's on the line. But you know what? Look at the hole he just opened up. Opened up a nice big hole there for Wildman, and he goes into the end zone. Got to share that with 75, though, don't you? Absolutely. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. As somebody who used to wear a number that starts with, uh, you know, I used to be 79 uh, in <laughs> for a couple years in high school. Jeez, you don't get many opportunities like that. Really, the athleticism, too, to bat that thing up and catch it. Yeah. So, back-to-back -back interceptions on these two dry, opening drives of the third quarter for MCI has given Hamden now a 20-0 lead. And they'll go for the two-point conversion again. Thornwall will take the run. And, boy, they love running off that right side. And did he get in? I don't see an indication. And, no, he didn't make it. So, Hamden Academy on top, 20-0. We're back after this. We had a lot of work to do, and we came in with a plan, and Troy took great care of us. He took us through all the options that were good for us, and we told him our needs, and he really, really came through with us. Yeah, brought us, well, we brought home some examples and come up with a decision, and they made it happen. Yep. Mainwood Floors is a local business, and we really like to see local businesses boom. MCI Huskies football on WABI is sponsored by Skills Inc. Now hiring direct support professionals for all shifts and locations throughout central Maine. Contact us today and start your new career tomorrow. Nitram Excavation, a local construction company at the heart of your community's infrastructure that delivers quality work on every project. And by FormTech. Are you a high school student interested in machining or fabrication trades? FormTech Maine and Clinton has internship, scholarship, and full-time employment opportunities available. So Hennigan with a deep kickoff again, and Shorey, pretty good return. He took it inside his 10-yard line, and he brings it out to about the 25. MCI needs a spark. It's been a, kind of a bizarre game, just a couple of weird plays here and there. Hennigan just, uh, what a leg on that kid. Booms it. MCI getting hip to the fact of how deep he can put it. Bringing out, going to start this thing at the 25, so... It's almost like they need they need quicker plays. Like if Kennedy's going to run at them, just go or get the ball out because he's getting in trouble back there with the pursuit from the Broncos. So from the 20, and there they go. Quick to Shorey, and that's not even going to work. Oh, my God, the Hamden defense just all over the place tonight. Yeah, Trey Collier hit to that game. Seen that one a couple of times. Caught him off guard with it the first few times they trotted out that four-wide screen look. But and that's uh, going to be a loss of what, four, three? Nice call that three, yeah. Yeah, Collier did a nice job of knifing right through those uh, blockers. Three Huskies couldn't contain him. And then on top of that, uh, it takes a while for MCI to get it in, so you're not playing with that, that pace that you need to overcome a three-score deficit. So second down and 13 here for the Huskies as they'll stack up those receivers on the right side again. Kennedy being pursued again, but he's got some room on the left side, and here he goes. And that's the kind of play MCI needs. He kind of high steps there a little bit and gets it out to about the 43-yard line. So that puts MCI in business. And Kennedy shaking up a little bit as he gets up. We've got a, a flag comes in late. Hard to see exactly how it ended, but maybe he got thrown down afterwards. But most likely that's probably going to be a personal foul, right, just where that flag came in. And you said, we said they needed a spark, and that's exactly what it is. You know, in baseball, they say... Mm. 
unsportsmanlike conduct. We'll see how this thing ends. But, uh, you know, in baseball, they say hit it where they ain't. Well, run where they ain't. Everybody to one side, go to the other. So he picked up a little, 24 little yards there at the yeah. end. Picked up 24 yards on the carry, and they'll tack on 15 more down to the 44. There's a ton of time left in this football game. So a lot of time. That's exactly what MCI needed. Capitalize on it, though. Don't give a negative. Don't give anything back. Keep it going. Keep going quick. That was a good play, too. You know, he, they stacked all the receivers to the right side, and that left the left side kind of open. And Kennedy's got some speed. He got out there pretty quickly. So from the Hamden Academy 44-yard line, going to throw it out to Shorey. Shorey going to get tripped up. Only picked up three, but positive yardage. Scales out there. First time we've called him tonight. Bryson Scales brings him down. That Bronco defensive line is getting pressure just about every time. So we got a little cramp over there. Is trying to work that out. As everybody takes a knee as the calls come in. So the ball just outside the 40, three-yard pickup. It's a second down and seven now for the Huskies as they're on the move here. Down 20 to nothing. 6.45 to go in the third quarter. This time, Kennedy's got some time. Going to toss it down the sideline, and it's caught by Hannigan, but he was out of bounds. Almost another interception. In fact, clearly both feet out of bounds. One of the few times that uh, Kennedy's had plenty of time to sit back there and throw and try to drop it into the bucket, but uh, unable to do so. But in the end, out of bounds. Yeah, and he, run out of, he ran out of room, too, as he ran all the way to the sideline before he let that go. Got to figure you're in four-down territory here, right? You're down 20 to nothing. Third so and seven. Third and seven. I mean, yeah. obviously, if you can pick sure. it up, great, but try to pick up, you know, at least half of it. Yep. So this time, they're going to spread their receivers out. Kennedy on third and seven. This time, he's going to move left. Looking downfield, he's going to lob it over there on the sideline. A little bit too high intended for Connor Reynolds. 22nd time that he, he's got Brett, he's thrown it tonight. Right out here in the flat. Could have just dropped it right out there, but uh, trying to work the sideline. So fourth and seven. Calling an offensive play from the looks of it. So uh, yeah, I figure you got to go for it here. Sure. Still a lot of time, but, you know, you're... We're at the 40. Punt here probably doesn't do you too much good. So they'll look over to the to the Bertrands on the sideline. They'll look at those cards. You're right, so that does take an awful lot of time to get that play in, doesn't it? Yeah, they must use just about every second of the play clock every time out. So fourth and seven. Kennedy going to throw it down that sideline again, and it's out of bounds, and another turnover on down, so the Broncos' defense holds again. That surge on the offensive line, just a ton of pressure. Kennedy having trouble finding anybody open downfield. So again, MCI has moved the football tonight up and down the field, but they having an awfully hard time getting into the red zone, and obviously they haven't gotten into the end zone yet tonight. So I want to remind you that we are in Oakland Friday night. Meselonsky Eagles will take on the Skowhegan River Hawks. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock, and this is the first time we will be in Oakland on a Friday night for a high school football game. Looking forward to that next Friday. So here comes Hamden Academy again. Monyak hands it off, but that time, MCI defense all over it. Dom Rizza, that guy leading the middle linebackers. Dropped him for a loss, about a half a yard. Swarming defense, a lot of talented linebackers on that MCI defense. Nice, nice play there. Been coached, in talking with Coach Bertrand during the week, they started off with 22 kids, roster up to 29 now. Six of them, you know, it's a boarding school down there in MCI. So we've got kids from Korea, Tanzania, Hungary. After practice on Wednesday, Coach Bertrand stayed there and just went over the rules. These kids never, you know, no football in their background. Right. They're going to make their debut. They're going to play some JV football 
on Monday and hoping that these kids can be contributors as the season goes along. And there's a contributor in uh, the form of Mr. Uh, Thornwall. So Monyak comes in. His first pass attempt is to Thornwall. And it's good enough for a first down into MCI territory. Takes it down to about the 44-yard line, so a 16-yard pickup. And you got to wonder, how many reps in the cage does Monyak have with these groups, with this kid? Uh, probably zero, I think. Maybe your third-string QB's well, getting he's been hurt the last few weeks, too, couple, so not many. Uh, yeah, so this is just, uh, you know athleticism and the knowledge of the offense because I, I have to think he wouldn't have been out there much with these kids. So this time he'll hand it off to Thornwall. Going to work that left side. And he's got some room before he's hauled down from behind by Shorey. So Thornwall will take it down to about... Let's see where they mark it. Right at the 35-yard line. Picked up nine. Yeah, nice run there. Just let your blockers do their thing. Cut it upfield, take what's there. I tell you, I, I am thoroughly impressed with Coach St. Hard and his squad and his coaches that you guys, okay, someone's hurt, next guy up, next yeah. guy up, next guy up. They've got guys ready to go. One thing to talk the talk, a completely other thing to walk the walk. Second down and short here, second and one from the 35. Well, I'm not going to throw it again. Gets it out in the flat there to Hennigan. And he's going to pick up the first down easily. Takes it down to just inside the 30-yard line. Man, just cool as a cucumber, you know. He is. Looks the part. Throws a nice ball. Out there. Don't rush it. Just get it out to the flat. Six-yard pickup to the 29. First down. That had some speed on it. Get it out there quick. Well, for someone who hasn't thrown a lot the last few weeks, he's got some zip on it. So here's Hamden Academy again, just methodically moving down the field. Just inside the MCI 30, first and 10. Hands it off. And that was number 19, Trey Collier, in the game, taking that handoff. And there's a flag on the play after he's brought down. Might have been a face mask. Collier really didn't get much, maybe a yard, and he seems like he's a little shaken up as coach will help him off the field. My goodness. Wow. And you're right, Sully. Face mask. So that's going to move Hamden Academy even closer. Boy, they can't afford to lose too many more guys. Takes it down to the 14-yard line, a 15-yard penalty. And Hamden Academy's in business. So you give the credit to the coaching staff and his first year coach, St. Tard, uh, you know, trying to get these guys to buy in. And certainly they have, right? This is, a, you know, not an easy offense to run by any stretch of the imagination. And, and everybody that I talk to about Hamden is talking about how many athletes they have on the field. You can see it. And here's Thornwall right up the middle into the end zone. No indication. He's short. Well, the officials tonight don't want to don't want to give touchdowns. <laughs> so close. That is so close. And it <laughs> so squirted close. out at the end, but they're, they're saying that the ground yes. caused that fumble, and so now it'll be uh, first and goal from the one-inch line. Look at this one. Let's see. Oh, it, it did come out. Yeah, so it popped out. I'm, I think at Thornwall probably thought, hey, I was over the line, wasn't I? Sure. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. So it's first and goal from the one. So you think you go right back to him, right? I would imagine. He deserves so. the touchdown, don't you? Oh, no. Oh. No, Monyak's going to take it in. There you go. So the third string quarterback with a one yard touchdown run, and Hamden Academy increases their lead to 26 to nothing. Touchdown, Welcome to the game, number 12. So just like that, Hamden rattles off 20. In this, uh, I tell you, third quarter. In talking to Coach St. Hart this week, he did say they had a tough game last week against Oceanside. And Oceanside's a good football team. And he said this to us that morale was down. And they had to bring it back up this week. And uh, whatever they did in practice and coaching, it, it worked. 
try and go for two points here. So Maniak with the one-yard run. And he'll hand it off to Wildman. An easy two-point conversion. And Hamden Academy is on top. 28 to nothing. So how quickly a 6 nothing game at the beginning of the second half got away. Uh, from the MCI Huskies as Hamden Academy is piled on here in the third quarter. Yeah, they really have. And uh, at some point, John, we got to go through this roster. Uh, Hamden Academy, uh, you know, great school. They're having some fun with numbers here. I don't know if you're looking at, but look at some of the, the heights and, and weights they're giving these kids. Uh, let's see. Aiden Kotchendorfer, he was listed as 6'1", 180. Andy Hennigan, 6'4", 180. Some of these guys. This Monyak, they got it 6'3". This kid's 6'3"? I don't know here, Johnny. Uh, I don't know. He, he, he looks pretty tall down there. I don't know playing, about that. He's playing tall. If he's 6'3", I'm Elgin Baylor. I don't know, man. Let's, uh, let's All right. see. You're going to you're gonna have to start bringing the tape measure to the games, I, I, I guess. I, 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 you don't seem very trust, trustworthy. I, I know that this uh, I know this game. You just you, you inflate <laughs> these numbers so that when the opposing town teams look at them, they go, geez, look at the size of those kids. Well, the Broncos are on top here, 28-0, 231 to go in the third quarter. A couple of big interceptions in this quarter has really turned the tide. So Hedigan with that big leg will kick off again, 6-4, John. Now look at now look at, he towers over everybody else. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> One thing he's got, yeah. Like an MCI is just gonna watch that go. My goodness, he does have a boot. Wow, my goodness. Again, you don't see many high school kickers who can do that. So, Huskies will go back on offense here, just looking for anything. They had another, they had a good drive going last time, they just couldn't finish it. Fan Cam tonight, sponsored by Mainwood Floors. Buy from the best and forget the rest with Mainwood Floors and Decal Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. Fans out in full force tonight on this homecoming at Hamden Academy. All right, Huskies back on offense. Kennedy kind of been running for his life back there tonight. He gets it out quickly to Shorey. And, you know, when they've run that play, Sully, it's consistently been seven, eight, nine yards all night. Especially when it goes on time. Snap right to him. Get it out quick. Don't let Hamden's defense, which has been swarming around all evening long, get there. Nullifies that uh, very effective pass rush. Nine-yard pickup. going to be second down and one here. And actually, they're going to change their minds. They're going to move the chains. They're marking that football right at the 30. So, ten-yard pickup and a first down. Another look at those uh, intricate <laughs> play sheets. They are something, aren't they? So first down for the Huskies. Kennedy again rolling out to the right. We got a flag and a throw one up there. And oh my goodness, he completed that somehow. But let's see what the flag is. Jackson Foster came down with it. That flag's typically in the area where you see holding, right? It does certainly uh, make you think that. Talk with the Bronco. Do you want a first down or you want a first and 20? That's what it's going to be. Brandon Carney, our referee tonight. Jackson Foster did make that catch. He's got a comes from an athletic family. Dad's an athletic director, I believe, at Central. His mom play, uh, sister plays uh, college field hockey. So the Fosters are a lot of practices to get yeah, to. Yeah, from. My goodness, a lot going on. So back to the 20-yard line. That's going to bring up a first and 20 now after the penalty. And there you see, kind of take the knee there as they look over to the sideline. Getting things set. Caleb Kennedy, the junior quarterback, moved into that role this year. Trying to take advantage of his, his athleticism. Going to run right, being pursued again, looking downfield. He'll throw it. Complete to Shorey. One hopped it. One hopped it. Okay. So another incomplete, and that's the 25th time Kennedy's put the ball in the air tonight. My goodness. Each time they, they try to use his speed and, and you know spread the field out and go to the wide side, and Hamden's done a nice job of 
filtering guys out into the flats and, you know, kind of daring MCI to try and yeah. take, take a shot deep. And they really haven't to this point. I don't know that that's – they're running the spread, but haven't shown the desire to want and to want to take one of those shots. And their speedster, they, they tell us, is uh, number seven, Connor Reynolds, who got some, got some wheels on him. So maybe at some point take a shot deep to him. Quick pass out to the sideline, incomplete. That was Connor Reynolds he was looking for, just couldn't hang on. Not sure he would have been in bounds anyway, but it is incomplete. We want to thank our sponsors for making it possible for us to bring you this game. Please let them know you appreciate it as well. We do thank them. Love being able to bring you high school football each fall. Second down and 20 here for the Huskies from their own 20-yard line. Penalty backed them up. Incomplete pass brings up second down. Kennedy, a little more time this time. He's going to keep it. Trying to cut it back inside, and he'll get pushed out of bounds after about a seven or eight-yard game. I think Hamden's okay with that. It's a smart play by Kennedy. Everybody's covered. Tuck it up. Take what's there. So picked up sevens. That's going to bring up third down and 13. Or fourth down. Excuse me. So they'll punt it away. Shorey. Pretty decent kick, but my goodness, Scales gets it. And a nice return down to the MCI near the 40. Bryson Scales with a nice return and Hamden Academy in business again. And aside from end of the first half when Kotchendorfer got hurt, the Hamden special teams have been extremely efficient for them here this evening. And, and pinning MCI deep yep. with the kickoffs and having some nice returns to set up some great field position. And so now you're taking over at their 40, setting this offense up for uh, another opportunity for some more points. So Hamden Academy lost their first string quarterback in Johnston tonight. They lost their second string quarterback in Kotchendoffer. And now Monyak's in there, and he's run the offense very well. Handoff is to Thornwall and nowhere to go. Bunch of Huskies led by Dom Rizza in the backfield. Yeah, Barrett Walker, I think the first on scene. He slows him up, but Dom able to get in there. And uh, nice loss there for that Huskies defense. Looks like they lost about four yards. Three yards. Maybe second down and 13. And the Academy in no hurry now. Clock is their friend when you're up 28 to nothing. Final 20 seconds here of the third quarter. So Monyak, who came on to start the third quarter, has played very well. Hands it off to Thor Thornwall, and he gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. He's over 60 yards on the ground tonight as he's getting the bulk of the carries with uh, Tyler Coffin hurt. So that's the end of the third quarter. It's Hamden 28, MCI nothing. Back after this. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. Not sure what the weather will be in your neck of the woods, but there's a 100% chance of Luke showing up near you. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes throughout Maine. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. MCI Huskies football on WAVI is sponsored by FormTech. Are you a high school student interested in machining or fabrication trades? FormTech Maine in Clinton has internship, scholarship, and full-time employment opportunities available. Aurora Healthcare Family Practice, bringing back healthcare of the past while expanding with its future. Accepting new patients of all ages. And by Nitram Excavation, a local construction company at the heart of your community's infrastructure that delivers quality work on every project. 
renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Bring your vision and enjoy better light and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. Get looped, get sold with Next Home Experience. And welcome back to Hamden Academy. John Small along with Brian Sullivan, the whole TV5 crew. Hamden Academy on the move again. And timeout before we even get the fourth quarter going as uh, Coach St. Hard didn't like what he saw there. I'll tell you, though, Kevin Monyak's done a great job coming in as the third string quarterback. I want to remind you, we're heading down to Oakland next Friday night. A little bit of a road trip for us. We've been close to home so far, but uh, we'll, we'll head down the highway to Oakland to watch the Skowhegan Riverhawks take on the Mesolonsky Eagles. 7 o'clock Friday night, and first time we're going to Oakland on Friday night. Yeah, going to have to. Looking forward to that. Got the GPS? Yeah, we're going to have the to car. get permission to be out past curfew on a Friday night. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's cool with it. I think everybody will be good with it. Go ahead and cry, MCI. Jeez, that's, I don't know. See, that's again, I, as I get older, that's just, Wow, you yeah, know, you're, you're, you're softy. Just shake my finger at you, Hamden Broncos. <laughs> naughty, naughty. You don't remember making those, uh, helping to make those posters in the gym back in the day? It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while for me, a little, a little closer to you. I tell you, the, the other thing, too, is when you come to Hamden Academy... You're right by the snack shack. Uh, yeah, you knew I was going to say that. I know. You? I, you knew I was going to say that because I don't know what's wafting up here. I know, but, but it, it's, yeah, I knew exactly. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. It really it kicked great. in the high gear in that <laughs> third quarter. <laughs> it really did. They got a great uh, great snack, snack shack here. And uh, did that come... I thought that was incomplete, and Thornwall came up with that. My goodness. Yeah, a bunch of big bodies for MZI all around that thing, but uh, sneaks it through, and yeah, the P guy, PA guy here uh, <laughs> then throws a dart. Exactly right. Let's see this. I, yeah, oh, yeah, he got it. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So down to the 35-yard line. From the looks of it, I'd say that there's five or ten pass plays that Monyak is comfortable with, and they continue to go to those, and then they're the, of the shorter variety, get it out quick, little screen, you know, he's been pretty darn efficient since he's taken the helm. So it is going to bring up a fourth down here, fourth and five for the Broncos, and they're going to go for it at the 35-yard line of MCI. Monyak going to throw it, rolling left. Throws across the body, and he completes. My goodness, Trey Collier hauls it in. Well, they're not playing conservatively with a third-string uh, quarterback, are they? They've got something in this kid, don't My they? My goodness. That's a nice throw. Sure Roll is. Who is left. Watch him step into this thing, and the arm strength to go across his body like that, up over a defender. That's impressive, John. That's a nice yard pickup. A nice catch, too. That's, uh, you know, on fourth and five with, you know, 28 points. But since this kid's come in, they rattled off 22 straight. So another first down for the Broncos from the MCI 16. They give it to Thornwall. He's going to get himself down inside the 15. Picked up a couple. Well, that's doesn't nice really, who doesn't matter as a yeah. quarterback. Just put you keep next man up. Yeah, right? Thornwall getting the, oh the bulk of the carry since uh, Coffin went out, and uh, they haven't skipped a beat there either. Takes it down to the 14 yard line. Picked up a couple. So under 10 minutes to go in the game now. So, John, when you visit. 
high school fields like this and you and you visit and you go to the, the, the snack shack, do you have do you is there a barometer, a test that you you can see the quality of uh, what they're providing? Is it the hot dog, is it the coffee, the cocoa, what do you the popcorn I think, I think maybe? Every place is different, right? Sure. Doesn't every place have their own what do you do kind best? of specialty thing? Sure. I mean I'll do anything. You put anything in front of me. And here's Manya gonna run it. He heads for the end zone. Well, he can throw it. He can run it. 14 yard touchdown run. He's having himself a night. Yeah, geez, just gliding like a gazelle on that one. Uh, nice, nice run. Tucks it up and goes. Uh, exploiting a nice hole created by that offensive line. And 34 nothing. Trying to get a two-point conversion wow. here. So Monyak with a one-yard run not that long ago, and now a 14-yard run, his second touchdown run of the night. My goodness. This was a 6 nothing game at the half. I will remind everyone. It, is, it turned that fast. The two interceptions early in that third quarter really got Hamden Academy on their way, didn't they? The Broncos going for the two-point conversion. Going to give it to Wildman, and he's still fighting. We got a flag. Most likely, that's probably going to be a hole just where they threw that, so that version won't be good. Still lead 34 to nothing. So we'll end it on top. We'll come back after this. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the sparks that unite us to the passions that drive us. We're driven by the things we love. From the visions that lead us, the feelings that inspire us, to the roads that bring us together, Coastal Auto Parts, 29 locations in Maine, will get you to the moments that matter most with the largest network of parts and care to keep you firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQ door dot com. And Hamden Academy kicking it off again. And Kennedy, nice spin move, but he's brought down at the 25 yard line. Hamden Academy fans, happy tonight. Fan cam sponsored by Mainwood Floors. Buy from the best. Forget the rest with Mainwood Floors and Dekel Flora Supply on Main Street in Winterport. So the Huskies will come back on the field on offense. 25-yard line is where they'll start. Still got all the usual suspects out there. Caleb Kennedy going to remain at quarterback, trying to get on the board. You got to go to the film on Monday. Got to try to have some positive things to take away. They've had been some moments, but just unable to convert those moments into points. Kennedy, a little bit of a high snap. Going to roll to his left. Going to throw it downfield. And, oh, almost connected down there. As uh, you talked about maybe taking a shot down the field of Reynolds Selly, and they did right there and almost made it happen. Yep, got behind the defenders. And uh, Kennedy able to get it to him, but... Not able to hang on. Had to come back for it a little bit, but got him on both hands. Yeah, great de defensive play over there by Marcelo Musali. So second down and ten after the incomplete. Kennedy and a roll to the left again. Boy, that's a great pass. That was good coverage over there by Shorey. Or, excuse me, by Wildman. Wrong number nine. And the MCI player, the receiver, hurt over there on the sideline. Nice throw here. Yeah, really nice throw. And, uh, Hamden, with the lead, has dropped back Reynolds. a little bit. They are not bringing that... Uh, 
fervent pressure that they were bringing earlier, giving sure, giving uh, Caleb Kenny a little more time to survey his options, and he's had found a couple of open receivers to start this drive here. Yeah, eight yard pickup there, but Reynolds was shaken up on the play. So third down, boy, MCI is just trying to convert, get a fresh set of downs here. Down 34 to nothing, nine minutes to go. Trying to yeah, figure something out here. Yeah, officials. Okay. So they get it all taken care of, and here we go. Third down. Quick pass, and that pass just a little bit behind Jackson Foster. A couple people had a shot at that one. Yeah. Oof. I mean, a good, that's a good play. Sure. Good play call. Trey Collier is going to be thinking about that one tonight, though, when he puts his head on his pillow. My goodness. So let's see. It's fourth down. You're deep in your own end. You're down 34 nothing. It looks like they're going to punt it. So Scales is going to go back for Hamden Academy. He'll drop back to about his 35. Shorey's going to kick it away for the Huskies. Ooh. And he, he calls the fake punt. And there's Coach Bertrand. A little trickery, and I think I think he got it. I think he did, too. He reached for it. Well, I hinted at that earlier in the game, and there, sure. there it is. It almost seemed like he went with, remember the play Tom Brady always used to run on the two-point conversion where he pretended it went over his head. It seemed like he tried to juke him out of it, make him think that it was, you know, it was a bad snap and caught it, and there you go. Well, hey, look, you're trying to make something happen. You're down 34 sure. nothing. Why not, right? So... The play works. He got just enough for the first down. The ball is just over the 35-yard line, and MCI is back on offense, first and 10. We're going to have to run a class, though, for both these teams. It's called Not a Loaf of Bread 101. Come <laughs> welcome, welcome to my classroom. Tuck that baby away. So Kennedy back on the field with the offense. Going to roll right. The good thing he kind of sniffed that pressure coming. Gets it away. And completes the pass to Shorey. Picked up about five to the 40. And just like that, Broncos not so complacent. Okay. 30th pass attempt for Kennedy tonight. My goodness. Is he Mac Jones? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't... It's a little low blow on my part. Not enough interceptions yet. We have a final John Bass, third and one, Old Town Six. So second down here, ball at the 40-yard line. I think at some point too, Sully, you kind of—I mean, you're down 34 to nothing. The pace is a little slow. Under eight minutes to go. Kennedy. Looking for Foster out there and just just pass too high. Yeah, that one just sailed on him. I think he's trying to get out as quick as he could. Didn't uh, get the ball by the laces or how, didn't have a good grip on it. And just, you know, every now and then one gets away from you. So they'll regroup here. That's going to bring up third down. MCI coming off their first win of the season last week against Madison. The only win for Hamden this year has been Brewer a couple weeks ago, but they've lost to two good, Madomic Valley and Oceanside, two good teams undefeated. And attend, intended for Foster again, and they just can't connect. Yeah, just, uh, it's, the right, it's the right call. He just, you know, fatigue, unable to execute, trying to get it out quick. 34-0. Hamden has done a, a fantastic job with those guys up front in making Caleb Kennedy's life uncomfortable. Yes, here this he has been running a lot tonight. He's used his speed to uh, evade numerous sacks. They've got to him a few times, but uh, yes, he's been making his way to the sidelines. Not a lot of, you know, clean pockets for him this evening, and that's a, uh, a credit to that Bronco defensive line. So they're going to go for it here on fourth and six. 
And Kennedy again rolling out, gets it downfield, it's picked off. Picked off by Wildman. We're back after this. We had a lot of work to do, and we came in with a plan, and Troy took great care of us. He took us through all the options that were good for us, and we told him our needs, and he really, really came through with us. They yeah, brought us, oh, we brought home some examples and come up with a decision, and they made it happen. Yeah. Made with Floors is a local business, and we really like to see local businesses boom. Even on Saturdays and Sundays, you have a lot to get up to. Start your day with us on WBI TV5. Catch up on the local news that matters to you, get sports scores and highlights. And know before you go with your updated first alert weather forecast. Today is looking great for outdoor activities, but we may see a few rain showers moving in overnight. Join us every Saturday and Sunday morning for your local news on WBI TV5. So back to action here. Big run by Thornwall, but there's a flag down. I think it's coming back, holding on the Broncos. Boy, that was a big run. That, you know, if anything, Sully, tonight, penalties have been the bugaboo for, for Hamden Academy. Yeah, really. Uh, might be even more points on the board if uh, not for a couple of miscues like that. And that's a nice run by Thornwall, which is uh, all for not. So they'll walk that all the way back to the Hamden Academy 45-yard line. That's going to bring up first and 20. You know, I've seen a couple of Hamden Academy hats, Bronco hats, that I think if Tom Brady and the TV12 people were aware of, they might think, hmm, where'd you get that, uh, get that idea? <laughs> insignia? It looks remarkably similar to the uh, TB, although I don't, I, don't, I don't think we want to irk the TB12 folks. Yes, I, I don't know. <laughs> Thornwall, I think, might have been tripped up by his own lineman just uh, trying to get around him. As it looked like he had room for another big gain there. But he only gets, where'd they mark that football? Back to the 41. So he lost four, I lost four yards. Second and 24. What do you got in the playbook for that one? Well, the good news is you're up 34 nothing, That's so true. You, don't, you don't need to get that, right? You don't right? need it, but it's certainly... <laughs> You don't need it, but there, there's probably a play or two. I don't know. The way Monjock's yeah. throwing it, let, let him sling it down the field. We've Why seen not? a couple of them. Yeah, right. Thornwall around the corner has worked out pretty well, too. It really has. So second down and 24 from their own 41. Monjock's going to throw it. Why not, right? Gets in trouble. And, oh, he's carrying that football pretty gingerly, and he lost it. He lost it, and it's picked up by MCI, and they're going to get on the board. It's Caleb Rush. Touchdown, Huskies. Monyak steps up in the pocket. Caleb Rush, right place, right time, scoop, and scores. That's a freshman getting into the end zone. And, um, yeah, geez, what a great turn of events for the Huskies. To put some points on the board and just carrying that ball, not protecting it. Scooped up at about the 39 yard line, and he takes it all the way in. Well, if MCI was looking for something positive to hang their hat on, there's something right there. Yep, that's a Monyak's been pretty clean in this uh, second half of football, but. Uh, Got to take care of the football. So MCI finally gets on the board, and we got a and an academy player being looked at. Evander Preston, one of the linemen. Well, Hamden Academy can't afford any more injuries. My goodness. That looks like a cramp late in the game like that, working the calf in that fashion. Still working towards my MD, but that's what I'm going to call from up here. Dr. Dr. Sullivan. Well, I want to remind you, you can get caught up on all the local Friday Night Football action with First and Five. That's tonight on TV5 News at 11. Ben Barr, Connor Magliozzi out there gathering up all the highlights. And you see... 
Preston kind of gingerly walking off the field. Let's hope it is just a cramp. So the MCI offense struggling all night. The defense gets them on the board. A rush with the scoop and score. A couple of new guys shuffled onto the field for the Broncos, trying to get this thing squared away. Is uh, one man off, another one on. MCI got to go for two. They will go for two, for two, kind of a bunched formation down there. As Caleb Kennedy says, let's go. Looking to throw it into the end zone. He's being pursued again. Tosses it in the back of the end zone. Incomplete. So Hamden Academy now up 34 to 6. 5.55 remaining. So, John, here we go. You're These Broncos looking very dolphin like. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. Hey, who do your dolphins got this weekend? They have the Broncos. Funnily enough. Is that in Mile High or is that no, in Miami? No, that's the home opener for uh, Miami had to go on the road for the first two games. Unlike the Pats, they got their first two at home. It didn't go too well. No, it either didn't. of those two. No, it didn't, did it? Hope is alive, though. Got the, got the Jets this weekend. J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets this weekend. See, you know, some teams, they like to have, you know, first round picks and be the <laughs> here focal we, point of the here, offense. Here but we not go. Us. Here we go. We like six rounds. We're going to do it the hard way, right? We like to wait till the sixth <laughs> round, and, you know, that's where this, there's gold in them hills there, John. You know, you get a kid, doesn't think he's going to do anything out of Michigan, and then you wait for a wide receiver. Comes out of Liberty. Well, you were good for 20 years. It was. <laughs> you were good for 20 years. Yeah, what a run. Didn't know how good we had it. <laughs> I was actually talking the other day with some people like, is it? I was so indifferent as a Patriots fan. You know, you'd, you'd win 40 to 10. And you'd think, geez, you know, this wasn't. I wasn't even into this. And now I'm standing the whole game. It's, you know, you're down by 16. And, you know, my wife's telling me to calm down and <laughs> alarming the children. But I think oh, I'm you more don't want to do I that. I think I'm more into it now. You don't want to do that. Well, MCI hasn't done this much tonight. They're going to kick it off. I thought, that was, I thought they might try a little outside kick there, but uh, Brady Rogers sends it deep. And we do have some substitutions in the game now, as that is Julian McEwen, and he's, boy, he's running all over the place there, trying to make some good moves, and he'll be finally brought down. So Coach St. Hard here with a 34-6 lead, getting some subs in the game with 5.45 to go. Does he have a four-string quarterback? My goodness. Let's uh, Magnac, see. Magnac's back out there. Okay, there you go. Hey, uh, penalty on the return, too. It's going to go against the Broncos. It's, it's uh, homecoming. They want to ensure that they get every second out of this evening. You know, they <laughs> got everybody right. here. Nobody goes home. Well, the Hamden fans certainly enjoying it tonight. Always want to win on homecoming, right? Keeps them coming back next year. That's right. Hamden Academy will uh, head on the road next week as they head to Old Town. And MCI, I believe they will be home against the Hawks, Herman Hawks. All right, Manya hands it off to Thornwall. And the ball's loose. And let's see who's got it. And looks like Hamden Academy fell on it. Yeah, MCI being very opportunistic in these uh, final couple of minutes. Just keep so they won. I mean, even after that, you know, the fumble there, they wind up with what, eight yards? Yeah, nice job by MCI to yeah. get in there and try and rip that Seven thing in. Seven yards. So second down and three. Thornwell just keeps on churning those legs. And here he is again, getting a workout tonight. Comes around the left side, and guess what? Another flag. In the backfield, and I got to think that that's probably going to be holding. Boy, how many holding calls have we had on 
Hamden Academy now. That's at least four or five. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, you got new kids in the game. Yep. Yeah. But that's been the case all night long. And some of that comes, you got to give credit where credit is due, and that's, you know, good play by the defense. And rather than letting your guy get blown up or having a play stop before it even starts, well, I'm going to grab onto it, and, you know, maybe they won't see it. But it's only a penalty if they call it. That is true. So this is really going to back the Broncos up. As they will put the football at the... They might put it at 10. Yeah, it might even be the 9. So the 10, and they've got to get to the... 21, 22 yard line. Monya calls for it, hands it off to Thornwall. Thornwall gets through the hole there. Boy, MCI did a great job of stripping that football. That was Shorey who just put two hands on it, and I think Hamden Academy came up with it again. But what a great job by Shorey ripping that ball loose. Really kind of wild to have the ball. Flopping around like this. I mean, he's got a minute. Minute. Short, just reached in there. Grabbed it. But this is kind of the way things have gone for Hamden Academy tonight. Yeah, where that ball popped forward, it's, it's a first down. So, the votes are in. The votes are in. Player of the game, sponsored by Renewal by Anderson. Better way to a better window. Set up your free consultation today. And, hey, look, you're the third string quarterback. You came in to start the second half. Scored a couple of touchdowns on the ground. Gavin Monyak, we're going to give it to you tonight. Well deserved. Honorable mention, though, to Mason Jellison for the pick and we'll call it touchdown near touchdown. That was a touchdown that just <laughs> the referees <laughs> took from you. Here's a, And speak of the player of the game right here, Monyak, what a great run. Takes it out to the 47 yard line. My goodness, 22 yard pickup. Yeah, that's a heck of a run. He's just done it all tonight, hasn't he? he just for, wow. I even saw him throwing the ball around before the game, and I, I thought, geez, that kid, he looks the part. You know, he just uh, got a great arm. Is he just winded here? I hope so. <laughs> I think he might be. That was a long run. That was a long, was a long run. There's also no duplicating game speed. You know, you can run and practice. You can do all the sort of things that uh, prepare you for a game. But until you get into a game and you sprint, you know, consistently for 30 minutes of football, which Gavin's been out there doing a lot of, uh, that's, a, that's a new kind of winded. So another first down for Hamden. They give it back to Thornwall. He runs around the right side, breaks through a couple of tackles, still moving. My goodness, what a night he's had. Finally pulled down by Barrett Walker. Just finally caught him. Something about almost Christian McCaffrey F. He just, you know, asks, he just plants that foot and up he goes. A 24 yard gain. Yeah, that's a nice run. Down he's, to the 29. He's done such a good job uh, in this second half. The Broncos really have hit the uh, accelerator here, too. He dropped it to fifth gear and really gone. Offensively nutty. Monyak going to give it back to Thornwall. Going to try the left side. Oh, my goodness. One man to beat. Cuts it back inside. Touchdown. 29 yards. And that's going to put him over 100 yards on the night. And I don't know if we're going to show the replay, but Monyak's got a little move after the handoff where he gives the defender a little hip check. Throws the old uh, Gluteus Maximus at him, and uh, it's a little something. I don't know how effective it is, but it seems like it worked on that one. Just missed it, but as the guy comes around, he just kind of, you know, a little something. Let's know he's there. That's why he's your player of the game. Nice cut back by Thornwall. That's his second touchdown run of the night. Adds that to a seven-yard run back in the beginning of the third quarter. After the interception, just took just two plays there. I think he ran both times to go 20 yards for Hamden Academy, their second score of the game. This upset to 40-6, to six, and they will go for two. Boy, uh, Coach St. Hard not kidding when he says he has some athletes, huh? 
just short. Of course, the, the story of the night, but a lot of uh, players just short of the goal line. Yeah, tonight. I know that uh, <laughs> tough to get over. The difference of you know, 40 to six, 34 point game at 35, it becomes running clock in the second half. So just 3:02 to go. Just be uh, regularly timed here. The rest of the way. The Dolphins got the Broncos. How's your, how's your hockey team going to be this year? So there's a buzz in the air about the main hockey team. Yes. Cover of the New England Hockey Journal. What about the Terriers down at BU? Are they going to be any good? I think they're going to be solid again this year. Had a good year last year. Had a nice run in the tournament. They usually find some good players every year. Because you know it's fall. We're ta- starting to talk hockey. Already talking football, obviously. Baseball season, eh. That's yeah. over. I've, I, long, it's an, I know. You checked out a long time ago. Tonight is uh, Kenway Park. Barbie yes. shirts for everybody at Kenway. Yes. Barbie night. I will give it to you. Are you still watching those games? You you, you hung in longer than most. Uh, I did not watch the other night, I will admit. Oh, ball goes right through Kennedy's end of the end zone, so touchback. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to watch. Watch now. Yeah. Main hockey was picked ninth in the coaches poll, but that's you know what they they have to do that. You can't just base it on recruits. I think everybody's very excited about this uh, this class that's coming in, but you got to see it on the ice before. Of course, you can do that. And and um, I know in some of the media availabilities that those guys had, they said there's not there's not eight teams better than us in hockey East, and I think the rest of the land's going to find that out. But the good news is, like you said, there's a buzz. There's 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 oh, some yeah. optimism. And. They put some money into the Alphon and the the, the new scoreboard. Board. The new yeah. scoreboard. Saw the pictures of that ribbon the board day. all around. Yeah, it is yeah. Uh, pretty slick up there. So from the twenty, Kennedy's it just had a rough night. It gets to burn you there, but Kennedy just had a rough night, kind of running for his life back there. Yep. And speaking of you know pretty slick setups, Kennedy Academy does it. Yeah. Pretty darn good. They do. This is there's a reason that uh, this is where they host the, the Classy North game. You know this. Uh, it's all weather surface, so well lit. You know, it's just. Uh, it and is we'll, a, we'll be here for that again this year. A nice stadium, yeah. So second down here. Oh, fumble. And who's got it? Big pile of players there. They're looking underneath there. Who's got it? Hamden Academy's got it. So now you think the Broncos are in a position here where they can really just run the clock out. 218. You'd think that uh, he wouldn't need. Too much more, maybe a first down, but uh, the die has been cast for the most part here. Boy, a lot of turnovers tonight. That's just really that has done in the Huskies a little bit. Hamden's played very, very well, but uh, those turnovers have been killers. Yeah, been a wild second half. Ball just going all over the place. Third string quarterback, second string, or not second string, but you know, second running back. Really, a six nothing game at the half, and like you said, second half, 34 to six. All Broncos. So might have to go to the roster now. Is we're going to see some subs in there? You would think. Nope, Thornwall going to get the run. He's had a great night. You know, Coffin went down early. They got, they're kind of that one-two punch, but, uh, boy, he's just done a great job tonight, over 100 yards. You know, at this point in the game, you might want to think about taking your foot off the gas a little bit. You know, you're up 34-6. Uh, to six. I think, you know, the, the point's been proven. You want to give Kansas the kids a chance, but uh, you got uh, Thornwall running it pretty well. I think, uh, you know, maybe a couple fullback dives are what the doctor ordered. Picked up eight yards there, so it's second down and two. 2.10 to go. Boy, Monyak has just had a heck of a night. They started the night with their backup. Kochendelfer got hurt. There's the pitch to Thornwall. <laughs> Monyak out there. Looks like he wants to do some blocking, and they throw a flag from behind the play. Let's see what this is. Might be on hand again. The way they're reacting, and just they didn't make a great play there. And then you got Thornwall yeah. limping a little bit as he goes back to the huddle. Yeah, you would think at this point, with so many injuries to starters, you'd want to get these guys out. 
Game is well in hand. So the penalty will take the ball back to the 31-yard line. There's 2.01 to go. Clock starts again. Now Thornwell is going to come off. And for MCI, you know, they, I think that there's positives to go home with tonight. Sure. You came in and you, you faced a, a team that you knew was going to be really athletic. And, I mean, I think you just point to turnovers. Balls, you know, that you gave away. And there are moments where the game could have changed a little bit. But there you go. Take a knee and, and call this thing good. And that's a... Uh, that's the right thing to do right there. Yeah, again, let's go back to 6 nothing at the half. Exactly so this right. was a game. Yep. And, then, just and then those two picks early in the third quarter just changed the whole momentum. But to the victor go the spoils, and it was a fantastic second half with a patchwork crew uh, by the Hamden Broncos. And, uh, yeah, search ring QB. Really effective. Great running by... Thornwall, the big guys up front on offense and defense, wreaking havoc on uh, Caleb Kennedy, every possession the Huskies had, and then creating big holes for those running backs. And I tell you, for a team, Hamden Academy, that is, that won two games last year, won no games the year before, you're already at two now, two and two, that's, that's big for these kids. Yeah, you can see the realization of some potential out there on the field. You're right. 0-8 and 21, 2-6 last year. Already matched that total in 23. And to think, you know, as Coach St. Hard said, they had a rough game last week, lost 40 to nothing to Oceanside. And he said morale was down, especially after they beat Brewer here and went on the road and lost to a really good team. But uh, what a bounce back tonight. And that should do it. As Hamden Academy. Oh, wait a minute. They didn't have enough time to yeah, that's right. run could, the play could all the way down. Run it all the way down. So we'll have to run at least one more play. Nope, they're going to run it down. So that's it. Hamden Academy will improve to 2-2 two and two on the season. With a big win over MCI, 40-6. to six. MCI will fall to one and three on the year. And Hamden Academy, they talk about it, that there's there's excitement, they've got athletes, they want to win, and nothing better than a win on homecoming. Absolutely right. Great crowd, great showing. It was uh, 6 nothing at halftime. Uh, who knows when your backup uh, quarterback goes down, how you react to that. You go into the locker room, you know he's not going to go. Okay, next man up. Okay, one thing to say it, completely other thing to do it. That's exactly what the Broncos did, executing offensively. Lots of guys getting in on the action, being opportunistic when uh, MCI wanted to give up a football. And we almost got a big man touchdown. So <laughs> You're going to keep going back to that, one, aren't you? Another one, You're going to keep going back Mason to that. Mason Jellison <laughs> was denied by the uh, referee squad here uh, a touchdown. So uh, I'm just going to make a prediction. Family going to want a copy of the DVD. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm just think, and then <laughs> you probably want to send it to the MPA. You then just say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the great plays in the game, but my goodness, you know, for Hamden Academy, you came in here with your starting quarterback injured, a starting wide receiver injured, two linemen injured. You lost your quarterback that started the game, you lost your top running back, and you still come out with a win, 40-6. to six, Impressive tonight for Hamden Academy as they get the win over MCI. We'll come back to the Weatherby Complex to wrap things up right after this. Live coverage of high school football on WABI-TV5 is sponsored by... Coastal Auto Parts, owned and operated by a main family that cares. Hammond Lumber Company, a fourth-generation family business serving contractors, homeowners, and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and special services from 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Maine Wood Floors, buy from the best and forget the rest with Maine Wood Floors and DeKalb Floor Supply on Main Street in Winterport. Next Home Experience. Find your next home and get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. And by Renewal by Anderson. A better way to a better window. Set up your free consultation today. 
MCI Huskies Football on WABI is sponsored by FormTech. Are you a high school student interested in machining or fabrication trades? FormTech Maine in Clinton has internship, scholarship, and full-time employment opportunities available. Aurora Healthcare Family Practice, bringing back health care of the past while expanding with its future. Accepting new patients of all ages. And by Nitram Excavation, a local construction company at the heart of your community's infrastructure that delivers quality work on every project. Hi, I'm Mike Ford of Ford's Home Furnishings in Winslow. We've been in business since the 1940s. My mom and dad gave us a solid foundation, built on respect and fairness to everyone who came through our doors. We've worked hard down through the generations to earn and keep your family's trust. And we're committed to continuing our exceptional customer service. These are just some of the things that got us to where we are today, and we hope they will bring you here too. I promise it'll be worth the trip. Hammond Lumber Company has been a trusted partner of professional contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners for generations. It's the level of trust that Hammond Lumber has earned by providing an extensive selection of products and materials from industry-leading suppliers with guidance and support through every stage of any project, including delivery of materials throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company is, has been, and will always be your building project partner. No one gives you more bang for your buck than LS Tractor, the hard-working tractor with more features, more performance, and more warranty protection. And no one is more committed to making sure you're happy with your LS Tractor than Pin Bay Tractor in Clinton. For a dependable tractor at a great price, see the lineup of LS Tractors at Pin Bay Tractor, Bangor Road, Clinton. Come buy a tractor from our old man. When a major storm threatened, TV5 gave you your first alert. Leaning towards timing-wise, Friday and into Saturday of next week. We kept you informed throughout the week so you could be prepared and stay safe. Impacts, heavy rain, storm surge, flooding. We're looking at strong sustained winds and even stronger wind gusts making power outages likely. In Bar Harbor, uh, you can really see the effects of all this weather. This is why we first alert. Back to Hamden Academy and Sully at the end of the game, you can always kind of tell, you know, you see the joyousness in the huddle at the 50-yard line with the Hamden Academy Broncos, and then you see a little quiet down in the other end zone where uh, coach, the coach, coaches Bertrand are meeting uh, with their team. But, uh, boy, Hamden Academy, again, it's been a rough couple of years. you got a new coach that came in bringing some new enthusiasm, and you got a couple of wins under your belt already. Yeah, you got some talent out there on the field, and, uh, you know, a lot of teams are talented. Not a lot of teams win football games. And they started to realize that uh, when channeled in the right way, those talents can be pretty impressive. And that is exactly what we saw here tonight as a couple of injuries, uh, you know, that bug bit. And the next man up mentality was there. We said it a couple times, one thing to walk the walk. Well, harder to talk the talk than it is to actually walk the walk. And that's exactly what we saw here as the night played out. And uh, a 46 victory is how this thing wraps up. Yeah, and it really, again, going back to halftime, you just had the Tyler Coffin touchdown run in the first half before he got hurt. Those are the only points scored. And then a couple of interceptions from MCI in the third quarter really turned the tide. And Thornwall came up with a couple of touchdown runs tonight. Uh, Wildman had a touchdown run. And third string quarterback, Monyak, comes in there, plays really well, throws it around a little bit, gets a couple of touchdown runs himself. And uh, before you knew it, in that third quarter, it was uh, it was 28 to nothing, Hamden, and the game just got away from MCI pretty quickly. Absolutely right. You know, I don't know what the the song was uh, for homecoming here, but like the late great Eddie Money once sang, "John, take me home tonight." <laughs> <laughs> with the late, great Ronnie Spector and the late, great Eddie Money. There we go. Good way to end it, Sully. I like it. All right, final score tonight from the Weatherby Complex. Hamden Academy, 40 MCI, 6. Hamden Academy goes to 2-2 two and two on the season. MCI falls to 1-3. and three. Join us next Friday night. We're going to be head down, heading down to Oakland as we will be there for Missolonsky Skowhegan. Looking forward to that one next Friday night, 7 o'clock, right here on TV5. For my partner, Brian Sullivan, our director, Keith Allen, the whole TV5 crew, I'm John Small. Have a great weekend, everyone.